dressing room to go home, he was worried about Tulsa. He'd already moved on. Well, Tulsa won the toss. They have deferred. So the Golden Hurricane at home with those gold chrome uh, type helmets will kick it off deep and a booming kickoff sends the return man Sam Kraft back into the end zone. It's a touchback. Memphis gets the ball first and the kid we just talked about coach Paxton Lynch what a year number 12 is having yes he is the magic that Memphis has got right now he's completing better than 70 percent of his passes only one interception but 13 touchdown passes in the last 199 attempts he's on fire so Lynch and Memphis will have the ball first here tonight and Mac mentioned it right at the start of our show it has been a trend for the Tigers they have not started well they fell behind Ole Miss 14 nothing last week part of what made that win so impressive play fake Lynch taking a shot downfield into triple coverage and it's incomplete a very dangerous throw intended for Mose Frazier well you come out of the box with a bootleg trying to get something started and I think again the offensive coaches here at Memphis a little concerned about having some energy to start the game so they started out with a play action pass. Well Dorland Dorseus is in the backfield that's a quick hitter and dropped by Anthony Miller the normally very sure handed Anthony Miller so it'll be third down at 10 for Memphis when the Tigers have the ball coach your impact players. Well Alan Cross is a, a walk on deep snapper that became a, a leader for this football team and he'll be all over the place very versatile. You start looking at Mudo. Mudo is a great safety for them a tremendous tackler and he has to play well down the middle to stop this Memphis, Memphis offense. Memphis has been so good on third down there was movement on both sides flags thrown. I think that one's going against the Tigers. Start offense number 54 five yard penalty third down now this is not the start you wanted if you were Justin Fuente it's what you were concerned about but you got to keep your composure on the sideline just like he is and you've got to talk to the guys you got a freshman center that's sitting there in Drew Kaiser that didn't come in till January so guys let's get focused let's don't turn the ball over on a third down and long let's be smart we said we want to end every possession in a kick or a score. Third and 15. The throw is incomplete. Good coverage again. So it'll be a three and out for the Tigers of Memphis. And a good start for a beleaguered Tulsa defense. And the punt team for Memphis will come out. Spencer Smith has done an excellent job in that role. Connor Floyd deep to receive for Tulsa. Nice high punt sends Floyd backwards with a fair catch signal. He makes that right around the 27 yard line. And that's where Tulsa will begin with their junior quarterback, Dane Evans. Not been quite as consistent coach as Paxton Lynch has been, but he's done some good things. Well, he has, has not been as consistent. And last week he got an outstanding start against East Carolina. Then he threw a ball in the end zone, had a 100 yard interception for a touchdown, and he had trouble getting back on track. They know he's a leader, they know he's a competitor. They just want him to get more mature when he makes a bad play to move forward. So we'll watch for that early if there is a mistake made, whether he's able to bounce back from it. He's got weapons, and he's got Ramadi Warren, the redshirt freshman, in the backfield alongside him. Out of the shotgun, running this Art Browse baylor offensive system. Warren gets the handoff and is tackled after a short gain of two. You start looking at Memphis, Jaynard Avery, number six, is a guy that we're going to hear from all night long. He's probably the best pass rusher, very good athlete. Little play fake and that quick pass out to the left side, Josh Atkinson, who has put up some big numbers at the receiver spot for Tulsa. Short of a first down, third down at about four. Every 18.8 seconds, they snap the ball. Yeah, they go very fast. Don't go get something to drink. Better not leave the TV set. More plays per game than any other offense in the country. Tulsa. Evans from the shotgun. Throws short. The pass is caught for a first down. Immediately shoved out of bounds. That's number 29, Justin Hobbs. Very good throw by Dane Evans. First and 10, Tulsa Evans, and I don't know if that was a busted play or what, but he falls forward and gets right about back to the original line of scrimmage. And good job by McManus. 
Number 16, he's sitting there at the line of scrimmage and he grabbed him and pulled him down. Owen McManus, one of the standouts on the Memphis defense. There's another completion, this time on the right side. It's Hobbs again for another Tulsa first down. Tulsa's doing exactly what they wanted to do, to come out, have a little confidence. They wanted to get a quick start, and they want to stay on the field unless they're scoring points. They've had trouble on third down. They want long, slow drives to keep Paxton Lynch on the bench. Hand off this time and picking his way forward. Nice run for Ramadi Warren into the secondary. Finally tripped up at the 38-yard line. Now, if you're the Memphis defense, you've got to get them stirred up. So Galen Scott, as a coordinator, is over there saying, okay, what do we do? Let's keep our, our poise here, but we may have to start blitzing, moving people around to make some stops. Now, that, that was a penalty against the center. Chandler Miller flinched there. There's the defensive coordinator for the Tigers. All start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. First down. Red shirt freshman. Come on, Chandler. Sit in there. Everything's going well for your team. You can't afford pre-snap penalties. Three first downs already for Tulsa. And their first five plays from scrimmage. Play fake on first and 15. The throw incomplete off the hand of Kiaris Garrett, who really is the big play guy in this Tulsa offense. Good coverage from the Tigers. Chris Morley was in the neighborhood. You start looking at the pressure. On the right side of the screen, Big Dillon is, is one of the best football players in the country. He's the best defensive player for Memphis. He's a guy that's got to get after Evans all night. Now there's Jackson Dillon from the state of Oklahoma. Second and 15. Pressure comes immediately, and Evans is going down. Well, he had almost no time to react at all. Jannard Avery, Max already pointed him out. He has really come on strong. Yes, he's a guy they love. Probably the best athlete on their defense. Big, strong guy, but really a dominating pass rusher. He's already been in there twice. Third and 21, almost back to midfield for the Golden Hurricane. They're not going quite as quickly on this play. Four-man rush. That throw incomplete. He threw the slant intended for Atkinson. It's fourth and long, and Tulsa will punt the ball away. And you're actually trying to get down in field goal range or improve your area to punt there because uh, with the, the slant, quick look in, you're not going to get the first down unless you break some tackles. Well, Dalton Parks, who's had a good year himself. We got two good punters in this game, Roderick Proctor. A dangerous return man for Memphis. And that part was pressured end over end. Fair catch signal at about the nine. And Paxton Lynch and the Memphis offense back on the field when we come back. No score. So. It's the American Conference on ESPN on this beautiful night. In Tulsa, Dave Fleming, Mac Brown, Allison Williams with you. No score, just three minutes in, first quarter. As the 18th ranked Tigers up Memphis on the road. One of the best teams at avoiding three and outs in the country, and yet their first drive of this game back was a three and out. Well, and now you go back and just start the game over. Forget that first series. Get out of our system. Let's go play. Now Paxton Lynch in the backfield. For the play fake without a running back near him and throws it short right and cut to the middle gets some yardage. Tevin Jones with his first catch of the game and the first completion for Lynch and Memphis. Yeah, very good completion. Now you're sitting at second and six and uh, staying ahead of the chains. You mentioned the versatility of Cross. The tight end was in a fullback spot on that play. Another catch by Jones, and that's the first Memphis first down of the game. Well, and Tevin Jones is a five-year senior. He's a guy that he goes to with sure hands. Quick out, just like a run. He's got two very smart, safe plays to start this series first down. Dorseyus will get the first carry of the game for Memphis. And Dorseyus stopped after a gain of two. 
We will watch and see. Memphis wasn't talking much about it this week, but Jarvis Cooper, their sophomore, big bruising running back who had a nice game against Ole Miss, is not healthy, and uh, I think Dorseus is going to take a big chunk of the carries tonight. Yeah, they, they really like Dorlin Dorseus because he, he got hurt against Ole Miss last year with a knee and missed the year. But he has come back healthy and explosive. There's a quick completion. Left side, Mose Frazier who has been their big play receiver, another reliable target for Lynch. Yes, another five-year guy. He's a graduate. Now he's caught balls in 21 straight games. They're going to their seniors. Third and six. There's some pressure coming, picked up nicely, though, and a good delivery from Lynch to Frazier out to the 40, Memphis first down. Outstanding job, uh, Paxton Lynch sitting in the pocket. The protection wasn't very good. He had a big guy right in his face when you start looking at uh, a 54, Derek Alexander, one of the best defenders for Tulsa. Now another quick completion for a short game. Good open field tackle, Roderick Proctor, the sophomore from Orlando, Florida. Kerwin Thomas with the tackle. I think Tulsa feels like their secondary on their defense has gotten a lot better. They do. They're worried about tackling in space tonight, keeping guys in front of them because of the speed of the Memphis Tigers. So far, they've done a good job. Paxton Lynch over for his first three. He's five for five on this drive, getting into a rhythm as Memphis moves the ball and the throw downfield to his open target Jones left sideline Jones with the speed touchdown Memphis don't worry about open field tackling there nobody even got close to Tevin Jones 58 yards now when you start locking up a linebacker with an outstanding receiver it gets you in trouble a really good matchup for Memphis good protection they brought five he comes out of the back or off the line of scrimmage and turns up and nobody's near him for a touchdown once again go to that five-year senior Tevin Jones who was a big playmaker on that series first drive three and out that drive seven plays 91 yards extra point from Jake Elliott is up and good so the 18th ranked team of the country scores first tonight on the road Memphis with a seven nothing lead ESPN College Football is presented by Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Sandwiches. It's homecoming here on the campus of Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane hosting number 18 Memphis. Off to a quick start, 7-0 lead, 3 and out on their first drive, but a big play, 58-yard touchdown pass from Paxton Lynch to Tevin Jones. So the Tigers with the 7-0 lead. There's number 12 Paxton Lynch who may have had more buzz this week around college football than any other player in the country and he really looks like he's handled it well he he was really cool in pregame and super drive to give him a seven nothing lead that's a touchback Tulsa gets the ball back we get to remind you this week college game day built by the Home Depot for the first time from James Madison University in Harrisonburg Virginia Reese Kirk Des Lee Corso and the whole crew getting you ready for another full Saturday of college football 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN also streaming live on watch ESPN beautiful campus FCS school but one of the best JMU never hosted game day before and we were told by the guys that the Friday crowd the crowd today for their set show was about as big as any crowd they've ever had on a Friday in the history of game day that's got to be fun hand off to James Flanders who's now the tailback for Tulsa and a nice gain of five yards on first down Chris Morley number 17 made a good tackle he's a good guy up inside to make plays he's a very physical player for the Memphis defense Tulsa spreads that defense out. That throw is incomplete, intended for Connor Floyd. When Tulsa has the ball, coach, your impact players. Well, they lost Keevan Lucas, who was one of the best receivers in the country. So Josh Atkinson, big tall guy, number 88, got to come in and take his place. And Regis Ball, number 39, leading tackler for the Memphis defense, one of the best around. Third and five for Tulsa. Their head coach, Philip Montgomery, talked a lot this week about avoiding the three and outs of trying to keep the offense on the field. 
Take some pressure off their defense against this Memphis offense. That's a completion and a broken tackle down the sideline. Justin Hobbs having a nice start to this one. Finally, it was Ball who brought him down, but a lot of extra yardage there. That's 24 and the first down for Tulsa. And then very quickly to the line of scrimmage for that completion to Atkinson. Yeah, Tulsa tries to get you standing around, getting lined up on defense and snap the ball so quickly, especially after a big play. And it gets the defense off balance early in the game. They believe it really pays dividends late in the game. Play fake and right through the hands of Atkinson incomplete. Is there a downside? Sometimes if you rush, do you get some mistakes? Like maybe that one was Tulsa. We've already mentioned it more plays than any school in FBS and on average one every 18.8 seconds. And you've got to let your defense get some rest. If you're a lot of three and outs, they're back out there too quickly. Third and seven pressure. Evans can't get away. Sacked for the second time already. And that's Jannard Avery again. Man, he is turning into a monster. The sophomore at that linebacker's by. He may be the next defensive star for Memphis. Yeah, Jannard's having a wonderful night tonight. Fantastic pass rusher, and he is right in Evans' face. Evans getting to know him really well early in this ballgame. Just a sophomore, but he's big, he's fast, he's strong. He can play. Coaches love this young guy. Fourth and 14. Second punt already for Tulsa Parks with the fair catch signal at the 13-yard line. So a timeout here in Tulsa. Memphis leads 7-0. Ohio State. Well, Paxton Lynch started off over his first three. He got hot the second time Memphis had the ball. Got a strong arm. He's really smart. He's playing with a lot of cool. Gets the ball out very quickly to his guys. He's just trying to get some tempo going here, and then he hits the big one for the long play and the touchdown. They believe in Paxton Lynch, and he's a guy that had to get him going on the road. Now Memphis probably has to keep winning. They're undefeated. They've got the highest ranking in school history, number 18 team in the country. But if they do, handoff on first down, going backwards. Dorsey has slips away. Still on his feet. Ultimately, he will lose three, four yards on the first down carry. If Memphis continues to win and play on offense like they have been, I think Paxton Lynch has a chance to be in New York for that Heisman ceremony. I do, too. There's, there's absolutely no discussion of anything that should keep him out of New York right now. He is really, really playing well. Frazier on that fly sweep, and Tulsa read that well. So Memphis on this drive is going backwards. That was Miles Mouton, the redshirt freshman from Beaumont, Texas, with a nice play. They've had a lot of penetration on the last two plays, which isn't a good sign up front for the Memphis defense. I mean, for the uh, Memphis offensive line, Mouton gets in to put them back near the goal line. So a real critical third down and long here. Be smart with the ball. You're either throwing it deep, you're running the screen of the draw. You're going to be smart. Two plays. They've gone backwards 10 yards. So Lynch in the shotgun sets up. In his own end zone. That's crossed the tight end in motion. Lynch hands off. Dorseus straight ahead just gets back to around the nine yard line, not even to the original line of scrimmage. That's Michael Mudo with the tackle. And Dave, this is where Spencer Smith doesn't get enough credit. One of the best punters in the country. He's had nine punts, 50 plus yards, and gave him really good field position last time when he punted Tulsa back. So he can get you in the right into the field very quickly. And this is a good punt. Not as much hang time, but perhaps returnable for Floyd, who gets to the corner, and it is a return to the 40 with a flag thrown on the field inside the 40. So we'll see what the penalty is. I think there's some yardage that's going to come back. It was a nice return. Referee Adam Savoie. There's no foul for blocking the back. All contact was legal. First down. Well, that's huge for Tulsa. No penalty. That means the return stands. 53 yard punt, but a 26 yard return and great field position for the Golden Hurricane. Yes, good special teams play by Tulsa. Really smart. Holding up your arms and not hitting in the back. Guys have done a good job. You can tell Tulsa's ready to play tonight. Sometimes 
when you feel like you might be a little flat and you score one as easily as Memphis did. We used to call them posters and say, guys, don't think this is going to be easy and let up. You better keep playing because Tulsa is going to play hard all night. Yeah, their defense had an excellent stand, getting the ball back with that good field position. Now Evans takes a shot. He's got a man open. And it's a touchdown. Kiaris Garrett, a one-play drive. Tulsa's an extra point away from tying this game. 36 yards. Dane Evans and company, I think they needed that one. Really good protection up front. Maximum protection. There is no penetration at all. It gave Dane Evans time to throw to his star. Kiaris Garrett, a big tall guy with great speed to get this ball game back to even. Extra point up and good. Those have not been quite automatic. At least short field goals haven't been. The big play ties the game. It's homecoming here on campus. And the Tulsa fans looking for what would be a huge upset. Dane Evans and company have tied this game at seven. Well, Tulsa with the special teams play and then the big play on offense and the Golden Hurricane have tied this game at 7. 6.14 to go in the first quarter. Kiaris Garrett with the 36-yard touchdown reception to tie it up. You don't want to give Tulsa too much hope. So you've got to make sure that you come back now as a Memphis offense and answer with some kind of points. And this is a Tulsa team. Look, they're 3-3. Three and three. They're 0-2 in conference play. They played Oklahoma, and they hung with the Sooners. They put a lot of points, a lot of yards on the board. So they played a tough schedule, and they have been competitive. And you can see they've got a lot of enthusiasm on the sideline. Yeah, 38 points against the Sooners. Kickoff is much shorter this time. Sam Kraft with the return set up. Kraft. Out to the 30-yard line. There is a flag on the field right around the spot where the ball was kicked. Five. Kicking team number 44. Five-yard penalty. First down. Another look at that touchdown catch that tied the game. Really fast receiver. He's a, he's a great-looking young man. Kiarius Garrett. He could play for anybody. And then he looks for his buddy up in the pre or up in the coach's booth. Uh, Keevan is a guy that's out for the year. Keevan Lucas, he was one of the best players in the country. Good for him that he gives credit to his buddy up there. I'm playing for you, bud. You hang in there. Yeah, Keevan will be back next year. There's Keevan. He does get a chance with the headset on to watch the games. Allen Cross, the tight end with the catch. They want to keep him as involved as possible. And you saw the... Uh, the point from his teammate up to Keevan Lucas, who was putting up big numbers, one of the top returning receivers in the country. So a shame for him with that knee injury, but they do feel like he'll come back 100% next year. Hand off on second down, the ball's out. And the fumble recovered by Tulsa. Craig Suits came up with the ball. And Jamarius Henderson, the true freshman, put the ball on the turf. The Golden Hurricane come up with the turnover. You've got to take care of the ball. One of the reasons Memphis is winning is they've only had five turnovers for the year before this one. Four fumbles and one interception. You go on the road, you got a team really excited. You cannot turn that ball over. you got two of your best backs that are out. You've got an in inexperience back out there with freshmen. And you can see Coach Fuente talking to him there, saying you got to take care of the ball. He said, I was. I was. He said, you weren't, or you, you wouldn't have dropped it. Tucked the ball away. Really good play by Tulsa. Good field position at the 42. Yeah, so Memphis, which has done such a good job not turning it over, gives it up. The handoff on first down, back to the line of scrimmage. It was Suits who punched the ball out. It was Will Barrow who actually recovered the fumble for the Golden Hurricane. But now Tulsa's got a chance in Memphis territory to go ahead. Yeah, Memphis coaches told us a lot of their guys didn't get to practice this week. It was such a physical game with Ole Miss when you can't practice full speed in practice. Sometime you have the turnovers in the game. Play fake. That throw is complete for a very short game. Good coverage by Chris Morley, who is... 
been all over the place in the first quarter. It's third down. Yeah, Chris is a really good football player. He's a guy that loves to hit. Good tackler in space. Third down, Dane Evans. Pocket starts to collapse. He goes down with a flag thrown. That's the third sack already for Memphis. Leonard Pegues, Jannard Avery once again was in the backfield. Ricky Hunter as well. And that one is holding. Offense number 63. Penalty is to fourth down. That offensive line has become a big problem for Philip Montgomery's team. Yeah, we used to say, don't hold and let them sack them. If you're going to hold, at least keep them from getting back there. <laughs> but there's an all-out blitz on third down and long, cross blitz in the inside, and Pegues, the older linebacker, comes through and makes the really good tackle on Dane Evans. So that's a nice job by the Memphis defense after the turnover gave Tulsa a great field position. Now the punt. No fair catch signal. And out to the edge, but losing his balance, Roderick Proctor, Memphis, gets the ball back around their own 15-yard line. Well, if you're out and about on Saturday, tomorrow, we don't want you to miss any college football action. You don't have to. Stream every game live. Download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. And we got a full slate of college football set up tomorrow, as always. And available on that uh, Watch ESPN app. Baylor, number two ranked team of the country. And Philip Montgomery and company, they'll be watching against Iowa State. Texas Tech, Oklahoma, just down the road. A lot of points in that one. How about Ole Miss trying to bounce back after losing to this Memphis team last week? They host Texas A&M. A powerful run on first down from uh, Henderson, who just fumbled the ball. Memphis keeps him in the game, gives him the ball once again. Yeah, coaches want him to be comfortable, and, and when the, you get a turnover like that and your defense has to come out, coaches call that sudden change, really good sudden change defense by Memphis to hold them right after they gave up a touchdown with Tulsa. A little misdirection and a nice move from Henderson. His helmet flies off as he's popped, but he gets a couple yards for a Memphis first down. Jeremy Smith put the hit on. Anderson will have to come out of the game. And we'll see if we can listen for the contact on that hit. Well, you've got two different chin straps that are on there. So to pop a helmet off, it had to be a pretty good lick. It was a good lick. First down, Paxton Lynch on the move. He loves to throw on the run. Nice completion. First catch for Anthony Miller. At a Memphis first down, let's welcome in down on the sideline, Allison Williams. Well, Memphis has not gotten off to the best starts this season, but Justin Fuente said the one thing he likes is that there's no panic. They stay very calm, and I think they get a lot of that demeanor from their quarterback, Paxton Lynch. He is so relaxed on the sideline, guys, doesn't talk, but he did come up to Henderson after that fumble, pat him on the helmet, and give him some reassurance. He completes a pass to Frazier on that far sideline for a short gain on first down. Well, Paxton, he doesn't do a lot of talking to the press, to us, to anybody. And he doesn't do a lot of talking to his teammates. But I think that demeanor is a real good quarterback demeanor. It is. And I think he gets some of that from his coach because Justin Fuente is very similar with his personality. And he was a quarterback right here in Tulsa. Homecoming game for Fuente. That's a big gain over the left side. Dorlan Dorsey is the sophomore. Into Tulsa territory, down to the 45, another 11 yards for Memphis. When you're struggling a little bit, throw some easy passes to get everybody some confidence. Give the ball to a backup inside and let him bounce out and make some plays. Play fake. Lynch going deep down the middle. Miller's there. And it's caught. What a throw. Touchdown. <laughs> Well, that was pretty calm from number 12, Paxton Lynch, his second long touchdown throw of the first quarter. This one, 45 yards. Well, they set you up with the short throws. They have some runs. They're pounding. Tulsa's got to keep enough guys around the line of scrimmage or they can't stop their running game. And then you get play action over the top with a post route for Anthony Miller, who had 10 catches last week against Ole Miss. Anthony Miller is becoming a go-to guy for this Memphis Tiger football team. Yeah, what a story for him. Just basically unrecruited, a hometown kid, a walk-on who has turned into one of the best receivers in the American, maybe one of the best receivers in the country, and clearly one of the best quarterbacks, Paxton Lynch, because, man, was that a beautiful throw.
Start looking outside. You get him one-on-one -on -one with man coverage. And Anthony Miller turned him around and makes an outstanding catch over his outside shoulder. When you've got play action, it really helps the pass rush because it really stops it because everybody gets in position to tackle instead of get to the quarterback. And that guy right there is playing with a cool head tonight, and he's a really good leader. Started 0 for 3. He's 10 for 10 since then. 161 yards, a couple touchdowns. Hard to throw a better ball than that last one. Anthony Miller did not break stride, didn't move. And you can see your quarterback's pretty animated on the sideline because he's wanting them to know, pick it up, guys. Here we go. We're okay. Yeah, what a bounce back for Memphis. They turned the ball over in their own territory, tied 7-7, looking like they may go down. The defense comes up with the stop. The offense back on the field with the quick strike. So now it's up to Dane Evans and Tulsa to answer, trailing by seven. And the man-to-man -man matchups with the Tulsa secondary and the Memphis receivers are not working out very well for them right now. Usually doesn't take the Golden Hurricane too long. 16 of their 24 scoring drives in two minutes or less. 11 of them shorter than a minute. That sounds like a Baylor offense. It really does. I mean, Art Brow started this offense with a really wide splits with the wide receivers. So you could run the ball up inside. Dane Evans takes that one and makes a good first down run. And he's not the, the most mobile quarterback. A guy who's much more mobile is going to come on the field now. Number 10, Chad President, who made his debut at Tulsa as a true freshman last week. He's an exciting player. We may see him for a number of snaps tonight. He hands the ball off this time. Stops short by about a yard. Flanders, it'll be third and short. So there is Chad President. Yeah, Chad was one of the best athletes and one of the more highly recruited players as a quarterback in high school in Texas. He committed to Baylor as a receiver but wanted to be a quarterback, so Philip Montgomery got him to come here and play quarterback. Really good player. He got hit hard, but he did get the first down. So President with the carry for the first down. Now he'll come off the field and get a nice ovation from the fans, from his teammates. Dane Evans back out there. So he's not quite ready to be the full-time quarterback, but he's got some skills that Coach Montgomery really values. Down the sideline, another completion for a big game to Kiaris Garrett. Not a touchdown this time, but down that right sideline. Well, once again, big, tall guy. He can outrun you. Kiaris Garrett, he's tall, he's fast. This guy's a really special player, and he's given Memphis trouble. 33 yards, quick snap. Evans looking for the end zone into double coverage, and I think he just threw that one away. Intended for Atkinson. Last two times, the Tulsa offensive line, because of play action, has really stopped the pass rush of Memphis, and he's given Evans a chance to throw the ball downfield. And they need to do whatever they can to stop that pass rush, because Evans has been under big time pressure, not just tonight, the last several weeks. Straight ahead running. And I, you can tell the difference. Evans, he's not a bad athlete, but he's not president when he takes off and runs. Well, president's one of the best athletes in the country, and he got a little setback with a hurt knee early in, in camp. So he's just now getting healthy as well. Third and five with a flag thrown. Taking a shot to the end zone with two different receivers there. It's incomplete. Well, I doubt that was by design. Both Hobbs and Atkinson in the neighborhood. I think the penalty was for offsides. We'll see if it is. Side. Defense number 34. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. When you get an offsides by the defense and you know it's offsides, all the receivers run deep regardless of the play. You've got a free play and the quarterback just takes it and slings it and you hope you can hit it. If you get a sack interception, doesn't matter. You're first and five regardless. Well, President back in the game on first and ten. This is the part of the field where we figure we really may see more of him. Just a true freshman. He hands the ball off. Good tackle in the open field by Sharif White. Landers got maybe three yards, maybe four with the spot. Tulsa has not been a great red zone team. They've moved the ball on offense. They haven't been great in this part of the field, but they haven't had this guy for most of the season. He almost got away inside the 15 to the 14. 
he makes you defend a whole different part of the game because he's so fast and I'm sure there'll be a play action pass in here somewhere but your third down and three you haven't been a great kicking team so you've really probably got four downs in this situation I saw that touchdown percentage one of the worst in college football president he'll get the first down stacked up inside the 10 but it will be first and goal for Tulsa Now, if you're Philip Montgomery, this is what you want. The guys are doing a good job moving the ball. He's not going to change them. He's staying on the field. He's killing some clock. He's keeping Paxton Lynch on the bench. And he's got an opportunity here to score inside the 10. Well, that was a good shot. He was thinking about it. Evans was ready to come back in. Hand off straight ahead. Down to about the five. James Flanders once again. We haven't seen Zach Langer, who tweaked his hamstring in practice this week he's been their top running back this year he has not played but still Tulsa moving the ball on what will be the final play of the first quarter the Golden Hurricane trying to hang in there knocking on the door once again against the 18th ranked team in the country Justin Fuente in Memphis on to quarter number two here on the road they lead Tulsa 14-7 Well, I'm sure you know all about the official state monument here in Oklahoma, the Golden Driller, tallest freestanding statue in the United States. Yeah, that's a real oil derrick. His right hand is sitting on top of beautiful night in Tulsa, where the Golden Hurricane are knocking on the door trying to tie this game up. It'll be second down at goal to goal for Tulsa. Look at the total number of plays. This will be their 30th of the game, 11th play of the drive. So Tulsa ahead of even its own pace they're on pace snaps on pace for 120 plays in this ball game that would be a new conference record they set that just a couple weeks ago that's a touchdown Ramadi Warren straight ahead and with an extra point Tulsa will tie this game you put Chad president in the game you start running option you start getting him outside and then he fakes the option. All the eyes are outside because they're worried about him. And 25 jumps up inside Warren for the touchdown. Well, I think it's a good point by you. Extra point on the way here from Redford Jones. Up and good. He didn't get the touchdown, but their red zone offense looks different with him in the game. It's a lot different. When you got a really good athlete, one of the best on the field tonight, touching the ball every time, all those defensive players for Memphis have to put their eyes on Chad President, and uh, he really made a difference in the red zone for them. Moving the ball has not been the problem for Tulsa. I mean, their offense has been good overall, but especially in terms of moving it up and down the field, they just have not converted their drives and their yards into as many points as they should have. They solved that problem, and you're looking at a very high-powered offensive team. Well, because of all the sacks, they've had a lot of third down and longs. They haven't been good on third down on either side of the ball. But when you've got Chad President in there, your third down and your fourth downs are a lot shorter, and it gives you a better opportunity to make it. First in the country plays per game, second in drives per game, but those percentages, drives ending in points, right in the middle, points per drive, maybe even below average. It just gives you an idea. They move the ball. They just have not scored as many points as those yards should have produced. And really short week for Memphis to work on the option when they haven't seen that much of Chad President. So they're probably not as prepared for what he brings to this game as they would be if he'd played earlier or if they'd had another day to prepare. Yeah, the true freshman, he burned his red shirt, played for the first time just last week. Another fairly short kickoff. And Kraft will return it straight ahead outside the 25 at yard line. Tomorrow on ESPN, we've got another great matchup on college football primetime presented by Hilton. Number 15 team in the country, Texas A&M in Oxford to take on the 24th ranked Ole Miss Rebels at 7. So that's the first one. Then number 10, Stanford at home under the lights against Washington at 1030 Eastern on ESPN. Streaming live on Watch ESPN. Well, these night games, you never know what happens. Costumes are part of it here in Tulsa. Handoff, a huge hole up the middle. 
Still on his feet, almost out to midfield. Dorcius. You mentioned the talent of this kid who got hurt last year. They love him. Yes, a trap up inside. You've got Cross coming back to block the linebacker. This guy's got speed. He's got power. They think he's a special player. 22 yards. They give it to him once again. This time he cuts back right side and gets tripped up right near the first down mark. Will Barrow made a tackle that might have saved a, an even bigger game. They spot him just short of the first down. Well, what vision? That's a power play off to the left side, and he's patient, and he's got the vision and patience and speed and explosion to cut it back. Well, handed to him again. He bounces off another would-be tackler, gets the first down to the Tulsa 40-yard line. Well, he's 215 pounds. And he's probably not in great shape, so he carried it three times in a row. They're bringing him out to get him a breather because he hadn't played that much and missed all of last year after the Ole Miss game. Lynch will throw now, and a dart complete. Again, close to a first down, Phil Mayhew with the catch. And he's not a huge part of the offense, but he's another reliable player, just a sophomore. They got a lot of weapons. I think in some ways it makes Memphis hard to defend. They don't have that number one star receiver that everybody can key on they spread the ball around Paxton Lynch is so accurate and he does spread it around to so many people and he can run that's why it's so hard to defend second and one play fake he's going to take another shot down the field and a perfect strike along the sideline complete it's Mayhew for the second play in a row. First down and close to first and goal. That's another 20 yards for Paxton Lynch. We talked about arm strength. Good protection. He sets his feet. He follows through. And we compared him to Colin Kaepernick earlier in the game. Once again, big, tall, strong, strong arm. He can throw it from one side of the field to the other and be very accurate. One of the differences between the two, and it's obviously different levels, but Kaepernick is struggling right now. Paxton Lynch is just red hot. Option play, he will pitch it, and that's the receiver coming back into the backfield, Tevin Jones. Uh, they're not wanting Paxton Lynch to run the ball as much this year because he's so valuable to their offense. In that situation, he pitched it a little quickly, probably could have turned up and made four or five yards since you're in the red zone. Second and nine, Lynch, who's completed 12 straight passes. He started 0 for 3. He's 12 for 15 in the game. He hands it off. Straight ahead, Dorsius, end zone touchdown. And I say Dorsius, that's Jamarius Henderson, the true freshman. Dorsius is 28, Henderson's 26. They're both pretty talented. Memphis back in front. And that was a very physical answer. They lined up, they ran the ball threw the ball on the deep out, but that was a message that we're going to be able to line up and run the football. Allen Cross kicks out to the right, knocks the hole in there, and Big Man just steps in to finish the drive he started. Jake Elliott, extra point is good. So Lynch gets a lot of the attention, but the ground game for Memphis is also effective. Yes, very effective, and when they can run the ball, and especially on the road, it opens up everything. Dave Fleming, Mac Brown, Allison Williams here in Tulsa. No letdown for the Memphis offense coming off their huge win against Ole Miss. Justin Fuente and his junior quarterback, Paxton Lynch, chatting about that last drive where Memphis goes down the field, seven plays, 74 yards, and regains the lead, 21-14. Tigers on the road after their monumental victory against Ole Miss last week. Kicking the ball deep once again. It'll be another touchback. Tulsa gets the ball back, but before they do, let's take another look at that touchdown run for the Tigers. This is a power play on the goal line. 65, big Christopher Robinson is pulling from the backside. Allen Cross, leader, tough guy, moving around, kicks out to the right, and Jamarius Henderson turns it up, breaks two tackles, and knocks it in for the score. Really good message by the offensive line against the Tulsa defensive line of the Memphis Tigers. What a drive. Great answer drive. Well, back and forth, up and down, and not taking a lot of time on either side. These offenses have come to play tonight. 
It's Dane Evans back in the game, the primary quarterback. He'll hand the ball off straight ahead. And Ramadi Warren out to about the 29, gain of four on first down. And Dave, that's the 31st play for the Tulsa offense. They're averaging 16.8 seconds per play. Even faster Unbelievable. than on the season coming in. A fumble, but the ball off the turf bounces right back to Evans, and he completes the pass to Garrett. That was not how they drew it up, but it worked pretty nicely. That one's hard to practice. It's hard to get that ball to bounce right back up. And Garrett's hurting a little bit as he comes off the field. Dane Evans coming off the fake. He fumbles the ball. Luckily, it bounces right back up, and he throws the slant on the money for a first down. Well, it feels like fast break basketball anyway, so he dribbled before he threw the pass. Evans is going to scramble this time. Evans will be caught. Ankle tackle Dane. by a guy who's been everywhere. Jannard Avery having another big gain. That's his fifth tackle. And when you're a quarterback and you see Chad President come in and drive down and score, you're going to try to make sure you lead your team. Second and five, and a straight-ahead run tripped up short of the first down. Let's go downstairs to Allison Williams. Tulsa moving the ball well without their running back, Zach Langer. He's been using a softball on the sideline to work on that hamstring that's been bothering him. We'll have to keep an eye and see if he becomes available, guys. Okay, good stuff, Allison. Thanks for that update, because we noticed he had not been in in the first quarter, and he had been hurting in practice president back in the game here on third and short Memphis saw that run coming president still even almost got there but he stopped short Avery once again got right into the backfield so now Tulsa's got a decision to make boy Avery is all over the field he's penetrating he's sacking the quarterback he is creating havoc for that offensive line from Tulsa here's a situation where Art Browse at Baylor would normally go for it and now you've got a short yardage and goal line situation you could fake this because you're fourth and two yeah I'm a little surprised they're not going for it they're in Memphis territory just across midfield it's fourth and two you're a big underdog against a high-powered offensive team that has clearly come to play but they're gonna punt the ball away anyway fair catch by Proctor at the 15 yard line yeah, that's probably one that Coach Browles would have gone for with my experience with him. But he also feels like defense playing pretty good, so we'll see. Looks like some folks have had it with their... I wonder what it looked like at the uh, broadcast booth set up, ready to go for our Friday night college football game. Kind of an inside peek. I wish we were that quick. <laughs> it takes a little longer than that. Yes. It look. Dave Fleming, Mac Brown, Allison Williams here in Tulsa. Paxton Lynch for Miller incomplete with coverage right on top of Anthony Miller. So that snaps the 12 in a row completion stretch for Paxton Lynch. Darrell Williams with the coverage. And Bill Young, the defensive coordinator from Tulsa, he and Brian Norwood have decided to come after Memphis, especially on early downs. They will hand the ball off. And a broken tackle. Across the 20, Dorsius. That low center of gravity, those powerful legs. He was going down right around the line of scrimmage. Instead, it'll be third down at four. Yeah, Craig Suits had him in his vision there so he could make the tackle and just missed the tackle. Good run by Dorsius. Lynch throws to cross his tight end. And that tackle sort of pushed Cross to the 25-yard line. That's where they needed to get. It is a Memphis first down. Cross is such a valuable player on this team. Came in as a walk-on. He was a deep snapper. Now he's Mr. Everything. They move him around. Very versatile, but they go to him on a third down and short. A walk-on long snapper into a first-team all-conference tight end. Miller got the block from Cross, so he does it all. That sprung Miller for a much bigger gain. Another Memphis first down. This guy is the most valuable player. The coaches love him. He goes in motion to the left side, and he's the lead blocker for Anthony Miller to turn up. And not only does he block him, he knocks him all the way out of bounds to send a message, I'll be back. 15 yards, what a tremendous block by Cross. Now a handoff, trying to run behind him again. And Dorsius gets about four. He's a big, strong guy. And when they were stopping him on or behind the line of scrimmage early in the game, now those no gains are becoming four-yard gains. Okay, Allen, you can take a playoff. 
Not many. He doesn't even want the water. Leave me alone. I'm going back in. Loves to play. Second and six. Play fake. Lynch has got a man wide open. Complete. First down into Tulsa territory. That's Roderick Proctor. The great players make it look easy, and Paxton Lynch just seems like he is standing back there with these quick receivers. They're wide open, but he is putting the ball on the money just on the outside shoulder where Proctor can turn up and get his first down. Quick tempo, another play fake. Lynch scrambles and gets away, and now he will throw it away. Well, that play won't really show up in the box score, but Paxton Lynch saved a big loss by staying on his feet. Yeah, Jeremy Smith's an impressive player. 6'5", about 250. He puts so much pressure on Paxton Lynch by coming through, and he runs right over the tight end, Daniel Montiel. But good job by Paxton Lynch for saving the sack and uh, getting the ball downfield so you're at least second and ten. But that's a good football player right there. Hometown kid from a city that's produced a lot of great college football players right here in Tulsa. Lynch incomplete. Mayhew cut in. The pass was just a little bit behind him. It's third and ten. Darrell Williams, number six for Tulsa, has been a good cover guy. You got to be careful when you're covering them that tight because there's going to be a pump and go or a slant and go in this game plan pretty soon. Third and ten. Lynch again that pocket collapses and this time Jeremy Smith gets him down. And Lynch is looking at the. And there is a flag on the field downfield. I think that's what he was talking about. There are two of them in fact in the secondary. He went right after the referee. Holding defense number six. Ten yard penalty results in a first down. Wow that negates the sack. Darrell Williams called for the hold and gives Memphis a first down. What a huge play that is. No doubt as coaches when you see number six Darrell Williams so tight on the second down play you're going to do something to try to give it a little fake and get behind him and they probably had Darrell beat and he had to grab and hold and wasn't that interesting Lynch the sack wasn't even finished and he was up already barking about seeing that holding downfield that's where he wanted to go with the ball on the option play he pitches it and another nice gain on the ground for Dorseus Memphis has got everything with their offense. They can run it up inside. They can run the option. They can play action and step back. They can move the pocket, throw the ball downfield. They've got a really good offensive football team, entire package. We have almost eight minutes to go until halftime. They're already over 600 yards or uh, 300 yards of offense in the game on pace for way more than 600. Dorsey is. Took a long route to get the one yard for a Memphis first down. Well, and Memphis likes to run a control tempo offense. They like to stay on the field. And you can see they're already wearing down the Tulsa defense. Last week they had over 32 minutes of time of possession against Ole Miss. It's a good point you make because they're a no huddle team, but they're not lightning fast with their tempo like Tulsa, like some other no huddle teams. Kraft in the backfield alongside Lynch and Kraft will get the carry hit hard and dropped by Masabuko. Well, Sam Kraft you mentioned how Alan Cross from the tight end spot is so versatile. So is this guy Sam Kraft who is part running back part wide receiver. They do a lot of the, the jet sweep fly sweep type plays for Kraft. Really good high school basketball player highly recruited local player that stayed because his dad was a Memphis player, really good player, banged up from Ole Miss game last week. They fake it to Frazier on that jet sweep action. He's got a wide open man. Touchdown. And the catch out of the backfield for Jamarius Henderson, the true freshman's second touchdown of the game. This offense for Memphis is so versatile, they can take a running back and get him out of the backfield, fake the speed sweep. He can be the lead blocker, and then he's wide open downfield for the touchdown. So you, you see number 26, Jamarius Henderson going out like he's going to block on the speed sweep. He slips the block wide open in space for a touchdown. Another good throw by Paxton Lynch. Elliott's kick is up and good. Well, Paxton Lynch does a lot of things that other quarterbacks can't do. 
This one, I think almost everybody could have done. His receiver was wide open, but Lynch found him, and Memphis up by two touchdowns. AT&T for BA on ESPN returns. You're running the ball so well, and now it opens up the play action. You've got Mose Frazier coming across for the speed sweep. You've got Jamarius Henderson coming out like he's going to block. He slips the block, and Paxton Lynch with a big 6-7 frame stands up tall and hits Jamarius Henderson for an easy score. When you're running the ball inside and outside, it opens up everything else in the passing game. Well, he is playing so well, and it's impressive because there was so much attention on Paxton Lynch coming into this game after the upset win where he was a star against Ole Miss. Kickoff deep in the end zone. It'll be a Tulsa touchback. There was a lot of attention on the head coach of Memphis as well. Just 39 years old. And uh, Justin Fuente, who is a hometown kid, coming back home here tonight. I'm going back to my room. Uh, he went to high school right there at Union High School here in town. There's the yearbook picture for Justin Fuente. He was the quarterback for his high school team. In fact, his high school coach, he wasn't just the quarterback. He was a homecoming king. And his head coach there is uh, Bill Blankenship who was the, the head coach at Tulsa, now is part of the Memphis staff. There's so many connections between these two programs. There's Bill, who was the head coach through last year. Replaced by Philip Montgomery. The completion from Evans out to Kiaris Garrett. Good to see him back in the game. And Arthur Millette's one of the best defensive backs in this conference. Junior college player playing much better each week. Hand off and the run for a first down by Tulsa. For more on that Fuente story, let's welcome in Allison. Well, Blankenship took over as head coach in Fuente's sophomore year, and he said that he actually had his senior quarterback and junior quarterback come up to him and say, you know what, coach, I think I'll switch positions because Fuente was so talented and they knew it was his team. Nearly picked off. Evans took the handoff from President, so Tulsa tried a little bit of a trick play, and Evans almost threw a pick, so now President will come to the sideline, but there is Bill Blankenship. It's important for Tulsa to get something on the board before the half. 6.04 left. You're down 28-14. You need to answer and not go in with a 14-point deficit at halftime. Second and 10. That pass is caught by Garrett. It's one man miss, tackled at about the 43 yard line by Arthur Mollett, the player that Mac was just talking about. It's third down for Tulsa. Well, Coach Fuente was telling us he's got a lot of tickets here. He's got lots of friends and family. His parents are here tonight. So it's a big deal. It's the first time he has come back here as a coach to his hometown. I think he needed 91 tickets, and that probably didn't handle everybody. I'm sure there's others here. Third and five for Tulsa. So Justin had to have a family coming back home, high school buddies, and the Ole Miss celebration coming into this game. Part of the Fuente rooting section. Kind of a high snap, good handle by Evans, and then that pass is incomplete. Hit the hands of Hobbs. A little behind it, but he should have had that one. Well, and it was a hard throw as well. You want to have those passes like runs, Dave. You want to hit him on the run in front of him because he starts out. He comes back underneath. Obviously had a, a, a good open area to run and would have made the first down. That's a critical error for Tulsa. Yeah, Missed you, wonder, opportunity. you wonder whether that little bobble on the, the snap sort of threw off the timing of the play. Another punt for Dalton Parks. And it's Frazier who is deep to receive. Fair catch right around the 20-yard line. Well, this is a meaningful night for Justin. He tried to downplay it, and you can understand that. But coming back to his hometown, he had not come back for a football game. Forget about it as a coach since the quarterfinals of the state playoffs when he was a senior. I think that was 1994. So this is the first time he's been back in his hometown for a football game since then. Graduated from Union High School, played at first at Oklahoma, then left the Sooners program. 
Allison, you got any more on Justin Fuente and his trip back home? Yeah, I talked to him before the game today, and he got a big smile when I asked him about getting to visit with some family, which he did today. And pretty cool, guys. His grandparents are actually here. They're in their mid-90s and able to come and watch him here as a head coach. And also, well, it was a great homecoming for him, uh, not so much for Bill Blankenship. He said it was a bit weird being back at Tulsa, but he did say about Justin what a tremendous job he's doing as a head coach. And he said he never thought he would be a head coach, though. He thought he was way too smart for that when he was in high school. <laughs> well, I think he found the right profession. Justin Fuente, one of the rising stars in the country, and plays like that last one, helping make him look good. Phil Mayhew with a great catch from Lynch for 26 yards, so the Tigers are on the move once again. Short gain on the ground. Masumbuko with the tackle for Tulsa. You would like to use this four minutes and 38 seconds and get points, but not give the ball back to Tulsa for the rest of the half. The way this game is gone, we'll have about five more possessions before halftime. That one is caught. The defender there, Williams, was arguing that the ball hit the turf, but Mayhew held on. Mayhew's had a couple of great series here, once again against Darrell Williams. Darrell, you better look out. They're going to try to hit something deep on you, so little slant and go, something on third and three. Be ready. And just in case you're keeping track, this will be the 84th total play from scrimmage with still four minutes to go until halftime. That one's broken up, and there is Williams with the nice play. Great play by Williams. Obviously, Frazier's looking for a, uh, an interference call, but good tight coverage comes through him. Good play by the defense. Well, Memphis was late bringing the punt team out there, so they kept the defense on the field. Now they rush the special teams package out there. It's Nick Jacobs, who is the short field punter. Memphis has two punters. This is Jacobs, who will try to pin Tulsa deep. That one will bounce into the end zone, so not this time for Jacobs. Tulsa gets the ball back down 14 when we come back. Yet. Memphis with a 28-14 lead on the road at Tulsa. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Good stop by the Tulsa defense. You got three timeouts, 3.53 left to go in the half. Plenty of time to take a score into halftime, and Tulsa gets the ball to start the third quarter. So, important drive here for Tulsa. And their offense has been okay. Their quarterback's playing pretty well. Hand off on first down, and they've been doing that a lot. I think Memphis is getting wise to that. They stopped the ball carrier for no game. And Dane Evans, 11 for 18, 146 yards, a touchdown just pales in comparison to the production of Paxton Lynch. Yeah, it's bad to be compared to Paxton it at is. any time. He's done a good job tonight, and he's protected the football. Second and nine, play fake. Over the middle, and it's intercepted. Not that time. Chris Morley picks it off. So forget about protecting the ball. Morley with a great cut on the ball and the interception. Yeah, Chris Morley's a really impressive player. Smart player, tough player. Good hands, stepped in front of the receiver there for an interception, and now Memphis has a chance to go up a lot more, but another score with 324 left in the half. Good protection. The ball's just thrown inside, and Chris had the break on the ball the whole way. Chris Morley, really good play, interception. Dane Evans knows he, he threw the ball wrong when it left his hands. Wish he had that one back. Yeah, big mistake. 3.24 to go. Lynch with the play fake. Pressured. Hit as he throws. Incomplete. There is a flag down, and Lynch is getting up kind of slowly back in the backfield. So that one hurt a little bit. That's the last thing Memphis wants to see. Personal foul. foul. Face mask. Face mask. Defense, Defense number six. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, they've been picking on him a little bit tonight, Daryl Williams. Well, he's playing really tight coverage, and the, the coaches and that receiver are, are saying get after him. But here's the pressure. You've got number 38, Matt Linscombe, coming in, getting around Allen Cross and hitting him. It's a clean lick. It's a good lick. But 
You need to protect that quarterback, Allen. He's your guy. Yeah, every once in a while you see the call on those low hits of the quarterback. Matt Carey, and the defense played it well. The push out of bounds. Dorsey is for a short gain. It's third down. And what feels like a very big moment in this game for Tulsa's chances to pull off an upset after the interception. Well, you've got a 14-point lead. You've got one of the best kickers in the country, so you'll probably be smart. Yeah, and I said it was second down and eight situation. I said third down. It's second down after that penalty. That's a completion, Frazier, and now it's first down. Just looks so easy for Memphis. They can throw it. They can run it. He's so accurate. They've got really good receivers, and once again, uh, may have the best kicker in the country because this guy, Jake Elliott, is so good. You know, you highlighted the punter, and he's good too, Spencer Smith. Everybody talks about Utah, Andy Phillips, and. Hackett, their punter, as the best one-two kicker combination in the country. I might put Memphis even above and beyond those two. I don't think there's any doubt they're one of the best in the country in the kicking game. Yeah, you're splitting hairs at that point. Hand off. And that is Dorseus for a gain of two. Jeremy Smith, you, you highlighted him. He's played a nice first half for Tulsa. Young defensive end. Big, good-looking young man. Very powerful, strong, and a good pass rusher. Quick snap on first down. Didn't help Memphis. Now they're changing the play. Audible at the line of scrimmage. And now you're seeing Tulsa back out of their blitz to zone. Play fake. Lynch over the middle. Almost intercepted. That was read nicely by Jordan Mitchell, the safety, who just could not squeeze it. This is the cat and mouse game you see. They go back and forth. And then number eight, Jesse Brubaker, is right in Paxton Lynch's face. They didn't give him good protection that time. Could have been an interception with some room to run, but it's important for Memphis to score here, even if you just get three. So be smart on this third down and eight. Well, that one had some zip on it, but Jordan Mitchell should have had that one. Memphis has been so good in the red zone. They're one of the best red zone teams in the country. Their first. Now that's Memphis' first timeout. So with the third and eight coming up, Memphis takes the timeout. The kicking game, part of the reason why their scoring percentage in the red zone is so high. So while we have just a quick break, let's check in in the studio with Zubin Mahenti. Zubin. David, thanks. Coming up on the DXL Halftime Report, Memphis's offensive balance. You guys are watching it. It's a lot more than Paxton Lynch. We'll get Danny and Joey's thoughts on that. Plus, Danny and Joey, one of them, an upset alert, a top 10 team that's undefeated going down. We'll tell you who that is. And the bare necessities focusing on the ACC and USC. We'll see you at the half. David, back to you. All right, so we'll look forward to that. Justin Fuente and his team. Huddling up for a third and eight with 152 to go until halftime. And Coach Fuente is telling them, be smart. We need points. You're third down and eight. So we can kick the field goal here and, and be up 31-14 and be in good shape with a minute 52 left. That fake jet sweep, a little slant to Miller, breaking tackles but driven backwards. So he'll be stopped short at the 10. They needed to get to the seven. Good gang tackle there. Trent Martin helped lead the way. It's fourth down. Memphis has kept Lynch and the offense on the field, so we'll see. 25th career start for Trent Martin. Good football player. 49 tackles. And they're going for it. It looks to me like unless they're going to wait and call a timeout. I don't think so. Could try to pull them off sides, and that's what they did. They wow. pulled them off sides. My goodness. I mean, for Tulsa, that can't happen. Derek Lugin jumped. Side. Defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Well, you, you saw it coming. That's exactly what happened. That's what you do. Then you can even take a five-yard penalty. But Derek Lugin is a high-motor guy. And they knew if they get up quickly and look like they're going to snap it, timeout. he would jump off sides. Tulsa. And if not, Their you first. lose nothing. You call seconds. timeout and get the kick. Well, there have been two huge penalties in this half against the Tulsa defense. Remember the hold that helped extend the drive? It would have been fourth down for Memphis. It kept the drive going, and the Tigers just a couple plays later 
scored a touchdown. Now the offsides on fourth and three. And really, I mean, we talk about all the athletic gifts of Paxton Lynch, and he's got plenty of them, the strong arm, the athleticism, the mobility. But this junior quarterback, you know, he's also got some savvy back because I, you, you, you watch that replay there of how he pulled that off quickly to the line of scrimmage. He didn't uh, do the huge head fake just used his voice to draw that defensive lineman off sides. He's he, impressive. He's also a lot more animated on the sideline tonight, and he knew he needed to be. So I'm sure that's something the coaches have encouraged him to do. This guy's growing up. First and goal, Lynch, handoff. Inside the five, down to about the one, although there is another flag on the field. Dorsey is with the carry. We'll see if that's a hold against Memphis. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 99. Nope. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Not a good two-play sequence for Derek Lugin. Uh, you got to keep your composure. Sure, he's frustrated. It's embarrassing to be pulled off sides that way. Really good football player, senior, tough guy. Knows that they need to keep him out of the end zone right now, so keep your poise. Keep well, your poise. Be smart. 31st start in a row. Yeah, that's going to make it tough to keep Memphis out of the end zone. It's first and goal from the one. Already leading 28-14, and that clock has kept moving. That's been another productive part of this drive for the Tigers. Handoff, and that was easy. Touchdown, Dorsius. So the offsides on fourth down. The hands to the face made it first and goal from the one, and almost no resistance there. It's 34-14. That's our guy, huh? That's our guy. Fulk lines up at fullback now. He's been H-back. He's been tight end. He's been fullback. He's been split out. He can line up in four different places and gives them a lot of versatility in their offense where they don't even have to substitute, and they can use multiple formations. Yeah, Alan Cross sure does a lot for this Memphis Offense even without touching the ball. There's number 40. The interception leads to a touchdown, and the 18th ranked team of the country has come on the road and is looking like it. And you can see who the quarterback sits next to when he goes over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are two of the leaders of this Memphis team, which is having one of its great seasons ever. There's still a long way to go. We talked early in this game about this American Conference and how tough, how good it's been. Temple with an impressive come from behind road win last night. You got Houston with a, a nice win on the road against Louisville out of the ACC. They're still undefeated. They're a ranked team in the American Memphis. Navy is a very tough team in this conference. Yeah, some great teams in this conference and a lot of good football left. And Justin Fuente knew that. He knows there's a lot left to play in this, this season. Yeah, Memphis still has to play Navy at Houston at Temple and then potentially a championship game. Well, Saturday on ABC, it's college football presented by K Jewelers, number six undefeated Clemson against the Hurricanes of Miami. So that gets you started early, noon Eastern on ABC, and then much later, 8 Eastern, under the lights at Rutgers, number one Ohio State on the road, presented by Walmart. And let's go down to Allison Williams. Well, Ohio State's Urban Meyer making the switch at his starting quarterback, going Cardell Jones to JT Barrett. He told Heather Cox he sat down with both players, wanted to make sure he looked them in the eyes, especially Cardell Jones, and explained why he was doing this statistically. And the reasons were third down, ball security, and red zone. They were all in favor of JT Barrett. Yeah, pretty good reasons. Yeah, got two great quarterbacks. One of them wasn't playing as well as you wanted to. The other one came in, scored about four touchdowns last week. Easy decision. Tulsa trying to strike quick here near the end of the half. That pass is caught for a first down across the 40. Still going out to the 45-yard line. That's Josh Atkinson. So the clock stops on the first down. And now it will wind as they get the ball set. Little pump fake and a sack. Philip Montgomery is going to use a timeout. He'll have one left, 24 seconds timeout. to go. Tulsa, their second. 30 seconds. Yeah, they tried to fake the quick screen and have a double move and throw deep. And uh, big number 98, Jared Gentry, didn't give him time. Yeah, just a, a true freshman, but he's got a chance to be a good player.
A lot of pressure. When you've got a double move like that, you've got to take time to get it off, and he just didn't have an opportunity to get it off. And I think that was Cortez Crosby. Yeah, Cortez hasn't been in there very much. Good play by Cortez Crosby. Yeah, he really has not played many snaps for the Memphis defense, but getting a chance and making a play. So he may see some more time. Well, one of the keys to playing against a high-tempo offense like Tulsa is you've got to play a lot of depth and have a lot of different guys out there to keep your pass rushers fresh. Only 24 seconds to go until halftime. They will use that jet sweep to Hobbs, who gets tackled. Hey. Now there's a flag behind the play, and I think an illegal hit on the quarterback. So that's a huge mistake if that's on Ricky Hunter. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 91, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So that, I mean, that, there's no reason for that, and Justin Fuente's not going to be happy. No, you got to be smart. You got 18 seconds left, and I'm sure he probably didn't see the quarterback give up the ball, but Ricky Hunter, a five-year senior, has been around too long to make that mistake. Yeah, I mean, there's no, it was the extra push at the end of the play that did it. And Sharif White, number 30, made a, a super play running across the field to keep them from getting the first down. Now you've got a chance. Now the clock, uh, they throw a couple different flags. The clock started once again. And uh, the quarterback, Dane Evans, is asking, well, what's going on there? So the officials are going to talk about this. Obviously, every second for Tulsa is precious. And there have been kicking issues with the Tulsa field goal team. You're right. They don't have a lot of range out of their primary place kicker. <laughs> now Montgomery wants an explanation from Adam Savoy, the referee, part of this American crew. False start. False start. False start. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty. First down. This penalty includes a 10-second runoff. Tulsa has elected to take its third and final timeout to avoid the runoff. So that hurts because now you have to burn that last timeout so you can hardly set up for a field goal unless you get out of bounds on a first down play. That's a second penalty for Chandler Miller. Redshirt freshman, number 74 at center for Tulsa. And you just can't have those tight penalties here before the half. Yeah, there have been some sloppy mistakes for the Golden Hurricane. We're trying to pull off an upset against a powerful team. Those mistakes take away your chances for that upset. No, they knew they had to play error-free football tonight to have a chance. And it is really important that they still try to get something here with 10 seconds left. So if you can get an out, get it down to two seconds and still try to get your kick, or you take a deep shot. One of the two. On first and 15. One of the advantages of this type offense, there are always no huddle, so uh, it doesn't matter how much time's left on the clock. Evans pressured even on this play, does get away enough to heave it toward the end zone. It is caught on the deflection. Touchdown, Kiaris Garrett. Wow. A miracle for Tulsa. It's amazing how many times the Hail Mary works because guys have got to bat the ball down. Guys, don't catch it. Bat it down because when you tip it up in the air, you got a big, tall guy like number one, Kiarius Garrett, and he jumps high and gets the football. I mean, Mallette and Witte both were there to knock it down. Neither did. Garrett came up with his second touchdown catch of the half. 46 yards. It gives some credit to the quarterback, too, for even just staying alive on that play. Yes. So what a shock that is to Memphis, I'm sure. Extra point up and good. That's the final play of the half. And Tulsa's going to get the ball first in the second half. A lot of momentum going into half. You, all of a sudden, you're sitting here, and you look like you're going to have a sack with Jackson Dillon, and he takes it down for the Hail Mary and scores and puts them in a great opportunity right before the half. Zubin Mahenti, Danny Cannell, Joey Galloway with the DXL Halftime Report.
Dave, thanks you very much. The first flip that over. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy John's homecoming night here in Tulsa and a different feeling game after the final play of the first half 35 21 Memphis was impressive and they've got that two touchdown lead over the Golden Hurricane Dave Fleming Mac Brown Allison Williams back here with you and coach really that that final play of the first half does change things Memphis was comfortably ahead but the Hail Mary worked well it did work and, and it gives Tulsa so much momentum coming in and you just can't have this happen number one relentless effort by Dane Evans but he should have been tackled by Jackson Dillon number 34 one of the best defensive players in this conference and then you throw it up bat it down guys you got a senior in Don Witte 27 a junior college transfer in Millet number eight and you got an old smart guy Kiarius Garrett that just stood there and waited on the ball and made the catch that changed the momentum of this game now can Tulsa keep that momentum going forward well they do get the ball here as the kickoff goes into the end zone it's another touchback it's been all touchbacks from the Memphis kicker here tonight so 35 21 Memphis with the lead but Tulsa getting the ball and Allison Williams during halftime had a chance to talk to their head coach didn't you Allison yeah and coach Montgomery talked about being able to score the touchdown on the final play of the first half he said we need to use that momentum but we also need to go out there and create more of that momentum he said it is absolutely imperative on this drive to have success he also said that he was really pleased with their game plan utilizing both Evans and president in the first half and we'll see more of that in the second well, I think that uh, Coach Montgomery is right. I mean, Tulsa is facing an opponent that is going to put points on the board. And we've seen Tulsa move the ball. That's a Ramadi Warren with the carry on the first play of the second half. 21 points, 265 yards of offense and a half. Normally, you'd be thrilled. They're down two touchdowns. Still a pretty good half by Tulsa, though. They, they've gotten some momentum. They've made some really good plays. They've given up some good plays, but they know they have a chance still. Play fake and the throw is incomplete. Intended for Floyd. Well, nine drives. They had nine different drives in the first half. Scored three touchdowns, had a turnover, punted the ball five times, three times from in Memphis territory. Normally their punter doesn't let her because he doesn't get to punt enough. <laughs> so that's a credit to the Memphis defense. And I think we've answered the question of whether Justin Fuente had him ready to play or not. Memphis came ready to play tonight. I, I, I think you're right about that. It's third and eight here. From the shotgun pressure, he's going down. And that has been a big part of the story, the sack game for Memphis. Sharif White, Jannard Avery, two sophomores who are becoming big time players. Good call by the defensive staff, good execution. Sharif White comes in with a cross linebacker blitz up inside for the sack. So that will be 10 drives for Tulsa, 10 times that they've had the ball, and only three scores. I think if you're Memphis, that, that your defense is playing pretty well. I think so. They, they have to come out of here feeling good after the tough game they had at Bowling Green against this similar offense. Short punt, fair catch signal. And right near midfield, that's where Memphis will get the ball back. Paxton Lynch, we didn't even mention him coming out of halftime because of that wild Hail Mary play, but what a half he played. Very impressive. A lot of presence in the pocket. He sees the field well. He throws the ball down field well because he's got the strong arm. And that's one thing that people haven't talked enough about. Anthony Miller, the catch over the shoulder. He threw that ball off his back foot to Henderson very, very easily. He's been so accurate tonight. I'm even more impressed with him now than I was at, at the kickoff. 20 of 28, 289 yards, three touchdowns. A lot of tough running we've seen. That's Dorseyus once again into Tulsa territory. So we heard Allison just a moment ago say it was imperative for Tulsa to move the ball on their first drive. They did not do that. They give it immediately back to this guy. Had a chance to have a 14-point swing, score the last play of the, or of the half. Needed to come back out and get points on the board to cut this lead. Lynch with the play fake. Looking downfield. He'll take a shot. Frazier caught. And they'll spot him down at the one. Another example of that arm strength and the accuracy from Paxton Lynch. Frazier's hurting a little bit, 
He thought he got in. They spot him down to the one yard line. That's a 46 yard gain, and he's really hurting. A lot of pressure coming from Tulsa. Protected it pretty good. He had to hold the ball a long time, threw it off his back foot. He had people in his face and has tremendous arm strength. What a throw. And then Frazier, the knee down. I, I, the ball may have been across the goal line when that knee came down. They may took a, take a look at that. That may be the fourth touchdown pass for Paxton Lynch. Maybe more importantly for the Tigers, Frazier is hurting. Well, and you see what kind of leader Moe's Frazier is because all of those guys are concerned standing around him. Five-year guy, already graduated, really good football player. Now they're leading a pass receiver coming into this game. Well, he's going to stand up, and I, I think that's relatively good news. Ruling on the field is the runner was short of the goal line. Previous play is under further review. Jack Kramer is the replay official, and that is, I think that's good news for Memphis. It's a good sign. Got a tremendous amount of pride. Didn't want to walk off. Now let's see when the knee hits right there. I, they, they may have gotten the call right. If that knee was down, maybe just short of that goal line. We don't have the true look straight across the goal line. And barring that, there may not be enough evidence to overturn the call. From that angle, it sure looks like he got in. So will that be enough? I mean, that behind angle, you can't tell when the knee actually goes down. I, there it's down. You can see that right knee move. I think we've got a first and goal inside the one. I think you're right. And either way, what an answer here for Memphis. They stop Tulsa on a three and out. They get a big sack. They move them back for field position and then take the deep throw down After to review, the one. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So that's right. Not confirmed, stands, not enough to overturn it. Memphis will take it, though, with the ball at the one-yard line. Well, you like the attitude right now, this Memphis football team. Get out there and stop them, defense. Give us the ball back, and we're going to score quickly. A rare snap for Lynch under center. Hand off, and it's a touchdown. Dorsey is on first and goal, punches it in. And the Memphis Tigers are rolling. Yes, they're running the football. They're doing a great job. That was an outstanding drive for a touchdown. That's his second touchdown rush. Dorsey has 88 yards, two touchdowns. Lynch did a lot of the work with that beautiful pass to get him down to the one. So I guess so much for that Hail Mary creating a lot of momentum for Tulsa. Extra point is up and good. In fact, it clangs off the office building. 42-21 Memphis with the lead. Back here in Tulsa, Dave Fleming, Mac Brown, Allison Williams with you where Memphis is uh, taking it to Tulsa, the 18th ranked team in the country, 42-21. Just early in the third quarter, 13-04 still to go. If there's any question about a hangover from the great victory on Saturday, Memphis took down Ole Miss, one of the best wins in program history, vaulting him to their highest ranking in Memphis history. There hasn't been any hangover that I could detect. No, very impressive by the entire Memphis program, the players, the assistant coaches, the administration. Everything's gone smoothly. And when you've got guys like number 40, Alan Cross, to lead your football team, it helps. He's mature. He's tough here at H-back. They're going to run the power play. They're bringing big Christopher Robertson from the backside, and Alan Cross kicks him out for the touchdown. Then he lines up at fullback. They're going left. They've got 71. Gabe Kuhn pulling up through. Again, the power play, and now they come back. It's been their go-to play on the goal line. One more time, Alan Cross kicks out to make it an easy score for Memphis. Yeah, and that's just a sampling of the blocking that he's done. He has really impacted this game. He was your impact player for Memphis on offense, and he does it without touching the ball. He does it in a lot of different ways. Well, Tulsa's got to go now on offense. They certainly have the firepower to do it. And shove out of bounds. No penalty flag. Kiaris Garrett is having a monster game, including the Hail Mary catch at the end of the first half. Garrett's got seven catches, 151 yards, and two touchdowns. And we're hardly in the second half. And off on second and short, and that will be a first down. James Flanders squirts through. He 
It's imperative that Tulsa get something going here and try to get their confidence back and get some momentum. Evans keeps it, which just has not been a big part of this offense. He'll get a couple yards running straight ahead. Well, and with the score at 42-21, uh, it's harder to bring Chad President in and just play him because he's really not the guy with the whole package on offense yet. Yeah, that's a good point. They've used their true freshman in the red zone. The fans are upset because they're letting Memphis substitute, but that's the rule. If Tulsa substitutes, they have to give the defense a chance to make personnel changes as well. There's well, number 10. And good job substituting by Memphis because Galen Scott knows he needs to keep fresh legs on the field. Second and eight, Evans trying to get away from the pressure. It's not going to happen. Now there are two flags in the secondary, way away from the play. There's also a flag in the backfield. Those are the three different penalty flags on the turf. So I think there's a lot for this crew to sort through. Tulsa has not been able to block Memphis's front. Five sacks and a lot more pressure even than that. J. Dart Avery. Two fouls on the play, play, both by the, both defense. By the defense. Holding, Holding. Number, number eight, penalty is declined. Personal, Personal foul. foul, grasping the helmet, helmet opening. opening. Number 91, 91. 15, yard 15 yard penalty, penalty. automatic first down. First down. Uh, so the hold on Mallette, but Ricky Hunter who had a personal foul at the end of the first half that helped extend Tulsa's drive where they got the Hail Mary. He commits his second personal foul penalty of the game. So that was a good result for Tulsa. Penalty yardage moves him into Memphis territory. Yes, keeps the drive alive, and with their defense being tired, they sure didn't need to let Memphis get back on the field. Play fake. More pressure. Jackson Dillon with two flags thrown and maybe got a piece of the face mask. He gets the sack. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 34. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And this is a mistake by Jackson Dillon. He's got to keep an outside rush lane because he cannot let Dane Evans outside. He knew that, but he's got to take a better angle to him and make him work up inside. And it was a penalty. Yep, pretty clear call. So back to back personal foul penalties against the Tigers defense. Moving Tulsa much deeper into Memphis territory. Another play fake, taking a shot. End zone! Incomplete out of bounds. Garrett caught it, but just could not keep that foot down. See how close it was. Yeah, I, I, the right foot definitely was out of bounds. The question is, was the left foot down there while he had possession? What do you think? I think it's a touchdown. I think the left foot's in. He has possession. It's it's a fantastic throw. It's over the outside shoulder. He beat him deep. The left foot's already down. He's got possession right there. The there foot is on the ground. Ball is in his possession touchdown for the Hurricanes well that was the key moment there we froze it right there for a split second with that foot down right there is that foot down I think it still was did he have possession at that moment I think absolutely I know that it's tough to overturn the call our camera crew did an outstanding job of showing exactly when the foot hits right there and he's got possession of the ball before the right foot hits out of bounds. Yeah, I think he's got possession there. I think that toe is still down in the end zone, in bounds. And curious, Garrett's been around a long time. He thought he made the catch because he looked immediately to the jumbotron. So he had a feel that he had that left foot in. It's not an easy call for the replay official, Jack Kramer, but I, I think you're right. I do believe that even if it was just for that split second, he had control and that left foot was still down. The other thing that happens, the official went to it, he, he buzzed down to the field very quickly. Yep. And normally if they have to wait, you're not sure and they're looking at it. But it, uh, uh, to me, when they buzz down that quickly, they think this one's so close, we better look immediately. Well, Garrett, who's having a huge game anyway, this would just add to it. He's already got a couple of touchdowns, 151 yards. Well, they're looking closely. And let me tell you, the head coaches 
it seems like eight hours when you've got that couple of minutes to try to get the replay answer done to you. And you're asking guys upstairs, what's it look like on TV? Tell me, is it in, is it not? And, of course, the Memphis guys are saying, Coach, he was out. And the Tulsa guys are saying, oh, Coach, it's easy. After review, it has been determined that the receiver had possession of the football with his left foot down, inbounds, touchdown. So now they can celebrate. They overturn the call. It's a touchdown of 32 yards, the third of the night for Garrett and some light for Tulsa. Eight catches, 183 yards. It was really, really close, but I do think they got the call right. He's having a really good night. What a great football player. Rick Jones, the extra point, up and good with a flick thrown on the extra point. So we've had lots of penalties here in the last few minutes. We have to sort through this one. Paul Myers, the umpire, I think the guy who threw the flag. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number eight. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Timeout. What is that, the fourth personal foul against Memphis's defense or special teams in this game? But that does not take away from the spectacular throw and catch for Tulsa. Yeah, what a way to finish the drive for a touchdown. Looks like some. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Bodman Body Sprays in Sexy Sense She Loves. What you spray on stays on. And the Quesarito and Volcano Quesarito Big Boxes. Grab them at Taco Bell. Well, we have some offense tonight, that's for sure. And this touchdown he which was overturned upon review. It was a touchdown catch, the third of the night for Kiaris Garrett. And so Tulsa. Claws back within 42-28. So back within a couple of touchdowns, trying to hang around against the 18th-ranked team in the country. And give Dane Evans and the Tulsa Hurricanes credit. They continue to fight. This is a program that was 2-10 and 10 last year, and they're really starting over and trying to get the attitude to win. So uh, it's important they finish this game strong. Well, they've had a hard time stopping that guy. Paxton Lynch has been tremendous. At some point, that's what they have to do, figure out a way to try to slow him down. Lynch, 21 of 29, 334 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. We got 11-15 to go in the third quarter. A lot of football left. The, the questions for Brian Norwood and Bill Young, what do we do to stop this Memphis offense? It's hard to come up with an answer. They can beat you in so many ways. 440 total yards. We haven't even seen the run game of Lynch. And he's definitely got that as a part of his repertoire. They're taking another shot down the field. And another spectacular catch. This time it's Anthony Miller. So Lynch makes the throws. He also gets a lot of help from his receivers. What a play. Yeah, it's like they've got glue on their hands. Ball's thrown perfectly outside. Anthony Miller jumps up high with his ten, uh, five foot 11 frame for the catch 25 yards a quick snap lynch throws and he threw it away he took a hit after the play he was looking for a flag but no flag thrown second and ten smart play by lynch they were covered good pressure Let's see if we thought this was late Derek alexander I don't think so. I don't think so. Derek pulled off a little bit, and Derek's one of the best football players, a senior on the Tulsa defense. Cross in motion. Lynch with a little shoulder fake. Took another hit after delivering that ball. Good news for Memphis is number five is back on the field, Mose Frazier. Yeah, good to have the leader back out there. Those kids wanted him to play. Big third down for Tulsa. Third and three. Memphis so good on third downs coming in. They haven't even had to be that good. They haven't had a lot of third downs tonight. Now they're making 50% of their third downs on the year, and most of the reason, Dave, is their third down and four or less, just like this one. Yep. Two of six tonight. 
Fake it to Miller, hand off, and read nicely by Tulsa. That's a loss. Dorsius goes down. Trent Martin with a good play. But fourth down, and instead of three, it's fourth and five. Trent's a good player. Been around a long time. They step up for the run. He makes a good physical tackle on the big back. Jeremy Smith was in there as well. They'll use Nick Jacobs, their short field punter. And over end punt. And it's into the end zone. That is a touchback. Well, we get a chance to remind you college game day built by the Home Depot coming tomorrow for the first time from JMU. So it'll be quite a scene. And the crew's got some great stories. The making of a miracle. They'll revisit that wild finish. Michigan and Michigan State. How about Princeton's Mason Darrow? It is a story of courage for college football's only openly gay player. And then the remarkable comeback at Miami for Hunter Knighton, who was in a coma for two weeks and is back on the field playing. So that's a pretty amazing story as well. A lot of special kids, young people playing college football. And we got to remember it's not video games. These are real people with real lives that don't live in the bubble like sometimes we think. Yeah, and I think the game day crew does a great job of telling a lot of those stories every week. Now Evans stepped up and delivered it perfectly into the open field. What a move! And going all the way, Josh Atkinson. Touchdown, Tulsa. It's a one-play drive. And really, Dave, we go back to the penalties. Tulsa's off the field before the last touchdown, and now they've got all the momentum here in the third quarter. You're playing man coverage. You missed the tackle. The free safety. Number 17 is not in a good position. We've talked about Chris's play all night. And we look up, and we're back to a 42-35 ball game. Wow, what a strike from Dane Evans to Josh Atkins. at big plays all the way around. And who knows, maybe Memphis is going to be challenged tonight. Tulsa back in this game. Ohio State. This is the American Conference on ESPN. And the fans in Tulsa looking for an American upset over number 18 Memphis. 6-0 coming into this one. And they are being challenged now after a couple of big plays. Yeah, they're excited here at Tulsa. Trying to rebuild their program and come up with a signature win for their first-year head coach, Philip Montgomery. And with the quick strike touchdown, Tulsa's got some life on the sideline. It's 42-35 Memphis with 9.30 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> A lot of football. <laughs> yes, there is. Kick off and returned out to the 20-yard line by Henderson. Well, it's time for... Taking a look at how Memphis has improved under Justin Fuente, brought to you by Lowe's. Three years before, Coach Fuente showed up on campus, five wins total for Memphis, and his first two years were not easy. But last year and this year, 19 and three, they've won 13 in a row, third best active streak in all of college football. He has done a heck of a job. He's done a great job, and he's one of the best young coaches in the country, and I know everybody's looking at him. With a pitch play from Paxton Lynch. For a nice positive game for Memphis, trying to get back control of this game. That's Dorsius on the ground, who's getting closer to 100 yards. He's got 92 on the night. Thinking you can see the Tulsa defense got some rest with that 20-minute halftime. Another hand off to Dorsius. There's number 40, Trent Martin, stuffed him to set up third down. Well, it's ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by. Jimmy Johns, and we may well get a nail biter here. Dave Fleming, Mac Brown, Allison Williams. Beautiful night, 68 degrees. It was raining all day yesterday, early this morning. It's cleared up. 
Tulsa defense has had trouble getting off the field on third and long, so this third down and five is an important play. Lynch from the shotgun. He'll throw. It is caught. Dorseyus breaks a tackle, powers forward, and that extra effort gets the Memphis first down. I don't think he was going to get it if he'd been wrapped up right away. Dorlan Dorsius has been very, very impressive tonight. He catches it out of the backfield. He runs it up inside with power, and he has the speed to get outside. This was a key first down to keep Memphis on the field. They didn't need to put their defense right back out on the field. First down, Lynch, that shoulder fake, which has been so effective. This time better defended, intended for Mayhew incomplete. Kerwin Thomas with the coverage. Kerwin Thomas is a good player, only a sophomore, and he's, he's uh, done an outstanding job at defensive back tonight. It's a load trying to cover all these Memphis receivers when you got a quarterback that can see the field as well as pa Paxton Lynch. Play fake on second and ten. Flushed, throws on the run and drills one right in there, complete for what will be a short gain as Roderick Proctor out to about the 37-yard line. Another third down coming. And the ability, once again, of Paxton Lynch to break contain and keep the play alive and not take the sack. Memphis coming in with over 50% on third down. This one's huge. It's not the Stanford band, but they're in the ballpark here in Tulsa. Lynch throwing deep. And caught by Frazier. Great adjustment on the ball. There was good coverage for a Memphis first down. 30 yards. Had a double move outside. Again, pressure on the quarterback. He fakes the hitch, throws the ball perfectly for the first down. Hand off. Another broken tackle. Get into the edge with Lynch helping him out. Stumbling inside the 15, inside the 10. First and goal, Memphis. And that's Jamarius Henderson, the true freshman who's made an impact tonight. So impressed by the depth with Memphis. The Tulsa defensive player is down. That may be Kerwin Thomas. Could have been tackled here. Matt Linscott misses him. He turns up the field with really good speed. And we were just bragging on Kerwin Thomas comes all the way across the field to knock him out of bounds. It did save the touchdown, but he paid a price for it because he is hurting. So we're going to take a timeout ourselves while they look at Kerwin Thomas and be right back. First and goal Memphis leading 42-35. Now Memphis had opened this game up looking like maybe they would cruise to a win here tonight. It's a one touchdown game, but the Tigers trying to answer the Tulsa score moving down the field. It'll be first and goal. Kerwin Thomas did hop up. They were looking at him on the sideline and jog back to the sideline for Tulsa. But first and goal from the four yard line. Lynch handoff. Nowhere to go. Henderson stopped and he might have lost a half a yard or so. Derek Lusion, we got on him for the penalty and uh, the two penalties in a row, but he had penetration on that play and, and uh, hit him for a loss. Really good first down play. Yeah, they, they spotted him all the way, but he lost almost three yards on that run. Ninth play of the drive for Memphis. Option play. Lynch pitches out of bounds. Inside the five, Proctor took the pitch. Third and goal. Tulsa's playing so hard on defense. They're playing with so much more confidence than they did earlier. And Michael Mudo is a guy that we said would have an impact in this ball game. This is a big third down because if they can make Memphis kick and keep this thing to 10 points, it'll make them feel a lot better about keeping their momentum nearing the end of the third quarter. Play clock winding down, which doesn't happen very often with these two teams. Memphis 
out of the huddle so quickly to the line. Play clock at two, and the play fake. Lynch rolling. He's going to try to run it in. He will run it in. Touchdown, Memphis. We haven't seen that much tonight, but that burst of speed at the end of that play just kind of gives you an idea of the total package. He can do it all. We said that he looked a lot like Colin Kaepernick early in the ball game, and there's no play that mo looks more like Colin Kaepernick than faking the power, which you've run all night. You're running the naked to the backside, and he just outruns everybody. People are in good position. But the man at 6'7", 245 pounds, runs into the end zone untouched. Ten play drive for a big Memphis touchdown. Extra point up and good. So the Tigers back up 49-35. They don't always ask him to use his legs, but when they do, he is more than capable. Yeah, he's really fast. He's an amazing young man. He was criticized as a young quarterback, and a lot of people said he wasn't going to make it, and Justin Fuente and... Daryl Dickey hung in there with him. It's interesting yesterday when we were talking to Coach Daryl Dickey, who was the head coach at North Texas State. He said, I was so impressed, and it's a lesson for all of us, especially you young people. When I first met him, he had the big hands, but he looked me right in the eye and had a good firm handshake. And he said, that's when I knew that I liked this kid. Yeah, it is an incredible story. And Justin Fuente trying to have his own homecoming story. Back in the town where he grew up and played his high school football. Jim and Lynn, there's mom and dad here to watch. His grandparents, Allison told us, were also here tonight. Along with, what, about 100 other <laughs> family members, friends. Well, that's a proud mom and dad, and they should be. To see him grow up here as a really good quarterback, go to Oklahoma, and end up coming back here with an undefeated Memphis team to coach. you got to be proud of your son. Offensive coordinator at TCU. And now the head coach and a good one at Memphis. Well, Tulsa, plenty of time left on the clock. Their offense has been explosive. Yeah, you, you look at Dane Evans. They were worried that when he had a bad play, he would let it linger longer. He has not done that tonight. He stepped up. He's throwing the ball with confidence. He's leading his team. And he keeps coming back time and time again. The offensive line has had trouble with the pass rush. But the two big receivers outside can catch the ball and run and make big plays. Well, it's feeling like an Art Bryles Baylor offense. The touchdown passes from Evans tonight 36 yards, 46 yards, 32 yards, 80 yards. That quick strike, big play capability. Evans in the pocket with all kinds of time, taking another shot, and it's incomplete. And really, that one was dropped. Justin Hobbs had his hands on it, he just could not quite hold on it. Maybe the defender helped break that up. Yeah, but it was a perfect throw. It was. I, I, I think we've seen Dane Evans get more confidence as this game's gone on. Four different scoring drives tonight that have taken le less than a minute. Uh, movement up front. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, that'll help this uh, beleaguered Memphis defense. Uh, Allison, uh, how's that defense looking to you? And they've seemed frustrated on the sideline. In fact, just a few moments ago, Galen Scott, their defensive coordinator, gathered his entire defense together. He said, look, take a deep breath. Calm down. Just go out there and play. You just need to do what you are supposed to do. Don't worry about everybody else. Focus on doing your job and calm down. Second and 15. That pass is caught by the big play receiver, Garrett. Out of bounds near the 30. Sometimes, Dave, you, you can sit there and, and try to get them ready to play, and they're so excited, and then you get such a big lead, and it looks like a blowout, and you've got to be careful not to let them back in the game. Well, they got quickly to the line of scrimmage. Then they look to the sideline for the call on third and five. They got the rush package in. That slant is caught, but a nice tackle. Short of the first down, Ar Arthur Mollette, who I think is one of those players Allison was talking about who was frustrated on the sideline. That's a big play, and that is going to force a Tulsa punt. Well, good job by the staff of setting, settling Arthur Mollette down. He's a really good football player. Came in from junior college, had a couple of bad plays, but now he's back on the field playing with a lot of confidence. So that is huge. Stop the yard short. They are going to punt the ball, and a nice punt. Fair catch signal. 
Frazier makes it at about the 28 yard line. And this is what we were talking about Arthur Mollett who made that big play on defense. This was a few minutes earlier after missing a play and making a couple penalties. He was clearly frustrated. Well, and this is what coaching's all about. He is frustrated. He's embarrassed. He made a couple of bad plays, had some penalties, especially the frustrating play on the Hail Mary right before the game. Coaches settle him down. Hey, get back, get your head in the game, get focused. Come on, relax. You're a good football player. You're a good young man. And then you see all the other players coming around him and talking to him too, trying to pick him up. That's what good teams do. They pick each other up. And that message was received because he made the critical play on third down. Memphis gets the ball back for Paxton Lynch. Who's thrown for three touchdowns, run for another one. Big hole up the middle. Dorseus with the carry out to the 40-yard line. That'll put him up over 100 yards on the night. 12-yard run. Memphis, though, before they snap the ball, commits a penalty. Ball start. Offense, Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. First down. Micah Simmons called for the false start. Micah's a graduate with a 3.63 grade point average. He shouldn't be in motion. He shouldn't have a false start because he can sure count. <laughs> Under four minutes to go in the third quarter. So we got a long way to go. Two touchdown lead for Memphis. And what has been a wild highlight filled game another option style play good pitch by Lynch and they get a lot of the yardage back to set up a second down and shorter the sophomore Dorsey as you mentioned the depth of Memphis Jarvis Cooper is not playing tonight he was the guy who had the big game on the ground against Ole Miss Sam Kraft has hardly touched the ball he's been banged up so really in essence they're down to the third and fourth string running backs and look at the production they've gotten from those kids. I'm really impressed with their depth on both sides of the ball even to a point that they could leave Oglesby at home who was one of their speed guys at wide receiver and just because coach Fuente didn't like the way he practiced this week he wanted everybody to understand it so on Thursday he called the travel team out he wasn't on it and he said bud you're not going. That's a pretty strong move for a coach. I like what I see. Yeah, Jalen Oglesby, who is super talented, but he's at home watching tonight. That might have been Tulsa jumping off sides again. It'll be a nice run up the middle for a first down as long as that penalty is against the Golden Hurricane. Derek Lugin, I mean, that, that has happened too many times for a veteran leader. Side. Defense, Defense number 54. Penalty is declined. Result till play. It's a first down. I talked to Bob Greasy once, and he said the snap count is the most valuable asset a quarterback can have because it keeps the defensive front off balance. Third and one, they're excited, they're trying to penetrate, pulls them off sides twice don't, tonight. Don't you think, and don't you think uh, Bob would agree that the quarterback has a lot to do with that, his cadence, how he sells it. I mean, clearly Paxton Lynch is making it hard on the defensive line. He has a whole lot to do with balance. Hard to be more impressed with number 12, Paxton Lynch. Almost totally unrecruited in high school. Played in Deltona, Florida. His high school coach, we talked to him before a game a few weeks ago, talking about how they ran the wing tee offense. They didn't have enough receivers. So they asked Lynch to do it. He wanted to do it. Lynch keeps it. Tackled around the 40-yard line. I mean, in high school, you look at a guy who's become a Heisman Trophy candidate in college. Those are his high school numbers career-wise. 51% completion, 10 touchdowns, 10 and That's for his career total. Well, in recruiting, you've got to be good, you've got to be accurate, but you've got to be lucky. And they found a guy they thought was an athlete, might even be a safety, and here he is, one of the best quarterbacks in the country that may end up in New York. And I think they would say it. They got lucky with this guy. Lynch throws complete another dart. With another flag down toward the far sideline. Frazier for the moment has the first down. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number six. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, that will just add on to that gain. First down and moving deep into Tulsa territory. So Paxton Lynch, 418 yards, three touchdowns. 
Number 10 overall prospect this week in the new updated rankings from Armel Kuyper Jr., who's got him as a top 10 overall pick in the NFL draft. And the number two quarterback overall, and that may go up tonight, the way this guy is responding to every situation. Well, look, you can't judge by one game at a time, but Jared Goff last night on ESPN did not play great on the road at UCLA. A different level of competition for sure, but Paxton Lynch last week against Ole Miss, and that's a talented Ole Miss. He's banged up, but that's a talented Ole Miss defense. He carved him up. Well, and Paxton started 31 straight games in the last five, and now this will be six. His total yardage is, uh, or he, he's uh, over 300 yards passing in a row, and his total yardage is 339, and he's sitting there at uh, 10th best in the FBS. Yeah, this is his career high passing yards in a game. Look into the end zone, incomplete. Oh, he threw a bullet, and Anthony Miller couldn't quite get his hands around the football. Third and seven. You've also got to give the Memphis staff credit for walk-ons. They've evaluated them well. Allen Cross is a walk-on. We talked about Paxton not being very highly recruited, but Anthony Miller is one of the best players in the league now, wide receiver, and he was a walk-on as well. And a lot of those kids have now gone on scholarship, but you're right. The walk-on program has paid huge dividends for Memphis. Third and seven. Lynch pressured incomplete. That was good defense from Tulsa. Good play by Patera Wilson, the sophomore. Had a screen up inside. Very good defensive play by Wilson. He saw the back. He locked into him, kept his eyes on him, and uh, knocks the ball loose. Very good play for a young sophomore. Well, all he's had to do is kick extra points tonight, but Jake Elliott, who's one of the best place kickers in the country, will come out and try one from 30 yards. A little longer than an extra point, but not much. Good hold. Kick is up and perfect, and this time onto the roof of the football offices. So Jake Elliott punches one through 52 35 is the Memphis lead. Well when we are done here stick around Sports Center at night we'll get you all caught up post game coverage of game six Blue Jays Royals Sports Center at night when we're done on ESPN streaming live on watch ESPN and you love your baseball. I'll be watching. You, you, you've called it all year. You did a, a tremendous job with baseball and football and balancing it, but you're going to enjoy watching the end here. Well, Paxton Lynch, it's hard not to enjoy watching him. I think he could have been a pretty good pitcher. Paxton Lynch has got that arm. He's got that lanky frame. We talked about the, the uh, comparison with Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick, part of the reason why he was not highly recruited out of high school was he was a baseball pitcher and a good one, was a prospect in baseball. He didn't focus totally on football. That's not the case with Paxton Lynch, but you see that arm strength and that long frame. You start thinking that could have been a possibility for Paxton Lynch. And they did find him. They did take a chance on him. But also, they, they've... Uh, They've done a fantastic job of helping him develop. He wasn't a great player when he got there. He wasn't very good as a freshman. He struggled. A lot of people wanted him moved. They wanted him benched. But these coaches not only believed in him, they taught him to get better and better. And now we see the product that we've got. Yeah, I mean, a lot goes into it, right? It's, it's luck. You find a kid when nobody else was looking for him, playing in an offense that nobody wanted to look at a quarterback in. And then you develop him, and then the kid wants to get better, wants to work hard. He's got the physical tools. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Let's see if Tulsa can bounce back and respond. They have 35 points on the board. They're just playing against an offense that can outscore just about anybody in the country, so they've got to stay up offensively. Straight ahead run for President, who comes in for a play and gets stopped for basically no gain. And that will likely be the final play of the third quarter. And it will be, so can Philip Montgomery's team rally again? They have put some pressure on Memphis in this one. We'll find out. Homecoming for Justin Fuente. 
Another step in the coming out party for Paxton Lynch. We've seen offense all over the field on both sides. End of quarter number three, Memphis leads 52-35. Back here on a beautiful Tulsa night and Memphis on the road with a 52-35 lead. Look at the historic Kendall Bell students when they finish their exams here at TU. They run over and ring the bell. That's a tradition that they've had for 75 years here on campus. That's a happy bell. Yeah. You hear that, that ring, is good news. you are through. Third and two, and President is in as the running quarterback, gets to that edge, and yeah, stumbles forward for a first down. The true freshman who was hurt early in the year, and they burned his red shirt last week. He wanted to do it. Gives him an extra dimension. Yeah, Chad President, such an athlete, and he also has a chance to be an outstanding quarterback. They just don't have the whole package in. He got a knee and set him back, hurt his knee a little bit in the early camp, but he's going to be a really good player. Yeah, you told the story early, uh, President. Evans back in. He throws to nobody. And I think he did get out of the tackle box. I mean, there was nobody over there. So that would be the question. Did he get outside the tackle box? He definitely got the throw past the line of scrimmage. Now for intentional grounding. Quarterback was out of the pocket. Ball went past the line of scrimmage. Second down. So he did. And I thought so. Yes, it's really a good play because he's got all kind of pressure from McManus, the defensive end, or Christian Johnson, number 15, the defensive end. So he saved the sack, uh, lets him go for a second down and 10. Very smart play by the quarterback. Handoff straight ahead for a nice chunk of yardage. Ramadi Warren with a good gain. Dane Evans has played well as the quarterback for Tulsa. 18 or 29, so 18 completions for 339 yards. You see the distance on the uh, touchdown pass, a lot of big plays. Yeah, coaches will have to be pleased with him tonight, and this will help him with all of his teammates because they're going to feel good about his performance, and he just needs to finish this game well. Still got 14-23 left, and we know how quickly they can score. Yeah, down 52-35. You do wonder they have not been real aggressive on fourth down going for it, whether in this part of the game maybe they might consider that. Big pressure comes. The pass is caught. Nice strong catch by Connor Floyd. He had to wrestle with the defensive back, Dontrell Nelson. But he did not get the first down. He only spotted him forward for a gain of maybe three. Yeah, got press coverage. Millette takes Garrett inside. Really tight coverage by Dontrell Nelson, the junior on the outside. Well, they are going to go for it. So that's what we were speculating about. And they will bring President in the game as the quarterback. Now he's acting like his old boss. Coach Browles is going to go for it about any time on the field. Fourth and two for Tulsa. President straight ahead. I don't think so. Real, real close. But based on where they're running across to spot the ball, I don't think he got it. I'm not sure they were just totally organized for that, and he did not get it. That's a turnover on downs. Memphis will take over. So they went for it on fourth down, and, and Chad President, I don't think he was ready for the snap. Well, you've got a red shirt freshman center, and you've got a freshman quarterback, and he wasn't ready for it. And Memphis also did an outstanding job of stepping up and stopping the play. Yeah, he but still it never, caught it yeah, clean. Never got rhythm. But you're right, even just that tiny, whether it's a hesitation or whatever, it can take the rhythm out of a play. So not that time for President at Tulsa. That means Paxton Lynch back on the field and starting a drive in Tulsa territory with an option play with a great block for Alan Cross again. And a big game with maybe a horse collar at the end of it by Henderson. He gets credit for the run, and he did plenty, but my goodness. Alan Cross with the blocking has just been awesome tonight. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 21. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Another personal foul penalty this time on the true freshman McKinley Whitfield. Well, there's number 40. This is pretty much like a sweep. And look at Alan Cross. 
cutting back inside, cutting the defensive back and opening up the hole. And then Trent Martin makes the tackle and uh, it ends up being a horse collar by the freshman McKinley Whitfield who is hustling to make the play. Uh, more broken tackles, more strong running from Memphis and Henderson. It looks like he's going to be a heck of a player. Really does, and I, and I agree with Philip Montgomery for going for the fourth down, but when you don't make it, you get discouraged as a defense. That sudden change, now the defense has got to step up and try to make a stop. Anderson still in, Lynch rolling. He'll throw short to cross for the completion, but no chance to get in, shoved out of bounds. It's third and goal. Well, you made him our impact player. And he's part of the reason why they are so good in the red zone. They use him in different ways for misdirection, for blocking in short yardage situations. And you can use him without substituting so he can look at so many multiple formations. Rare on this kind of play that he would not be in the game. Lynch, high over the middle. What a throw and what a catch. Touchdown, Tevin Jones. Just beautiful on both ends. where only his guy could get it. Yeah, Tevin comes inside. He shuffles, he goes to the back of the end zone. And you've got a great quarterback at 6'7 that can see him and find him. So Tevin Jones, five-year senior, makes a super catch at the back of the end zone. Yeah, he's had a big impact. 424 yards, four touchdowns thrown, one rushing from Paxton Lynch. And I thought this one was a thing of beauty. Yeah, and Tevin Jones, he, he kept working. He wanted to find the open crease. So your quarterback looks at it. He finds him in the back of the end zone. And that's 59-35 as we go to break. Well, the locals tell us that's the place to go. Elmer's, 35 years they've been here in Tulsa. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Their tagline, it be bad. So if a place has that tagline, it's usually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, good local spot. Oklahoma barbecue. Smells good, and we're just looking at it on TV. <laughs> You're right about that. You're the barbecue expert. All that time you spent in Tennessee and North Carolina, then all the time you've lived in Texas, you got, you've seen it all. I've seen it all and eaten it all. And it's all good. <laughs> Kick off out of bounds. <laughs> That'll be the penalty flag against Memphis. So I don't Kick know. out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. Tomorrow on ESPN, great matchup. College football primetime presented by Hilton. It's Texas AM in Oxford to take on the Rebels. Still in the top 25, but desperate for a win. That's 7 Eastern. And then a little later, out west, number 10, Stanford, 10 30, hosting Washington. Speaking of that game, our home field advantage brought to you by Quick and Low. How can you not have a home field advantage when that's your own campus? Looks pretty good in Palo Alto, doesn't it? And when you went to Stanford, but they won 25 straight night games, so I'd say something's working. David Shaw's got a really good football team. Yeah, they play a lot of games at night. That throw off the back foot under pressure from Dane Evans incomplete. 25 straight night games Stanford has won at home. For a team that, I mean, historically, you've never thought of Stanford as a team with great home field advantage, but they've developed one. And you go back to who's doing good coaching jobs. They lived at Northwestern in the opener. Everybody thinks Stanford's bad and they're out of it, and now they're on a streak. Yep. Well, and it happens in this sport, right, where one game, it, you get a result that just doesn't make. Look back at that game now and explain that one. No. How you did that happen? You can't explain any of them. That's why coaching's hard. <laughs> Hand off and a short gain after a penalty against the Memphis defense. Ramadi Warren for a couple of yards. I'm showing my age, but it's like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance kid when they kept looking back and saying, who are those guys? Sometimes your team shows up and you said, who are those guys? They don't look good. They don't look like they care. They don't look like they practiced. And that's what we've always said. It's not about the best team. It's the team that plays the best on that night. And good teams make you pay. So Memphis stops the fourth and two, and they score immediately. So that's what happens, and that's why Memphis is such a good team. They're playing good on defense. They get better because they had so many new players. Well, Ramadi Warren, who has been hurting lately anyway, slow to get up. He's going to be helped off the field. Let's see if we can see where it happened. 
Yeah, hard to know exactly. And Memphis is in control of the game, but both coaches are saying, keep playing. Come on, guys, keep playing. We can get better. Tulsa's trying to get back in it. Memphis is trying to finish it out. Well, and the way that Tulsa plays, now Memphis is another story. Memphis, even though they play no huddle, they can bleed clock. They can control clock like they did last week. And Justin coached at TCU. He knows when you're playing a Baylor-type offense like Tulsa, it's never over. Yeah, he knows firsthand. Told us that yesterday. The throw complete to the right side. And that is caught for a first down by Connor Floyd. A first down for Tulsa. And you mentioned that Baylor system, and this is the pure Baylor system. Philip Montgomery was with Art Browse for 16 years. Evans on the move, switched the ball to his left hand, now loses it as he's trying to go out of bounds. There is a flag on the play. What in the world happened there? The ball just flew out of his hand before he was trying to just walk out of bounds. Holding. Holding. Offense, Offense, number 76. Penalty has declined. The result of the play is a fumble. Recovery by Memphis. First down. So that does not make Coach Montgomery happy. Penalty declined. It was against Tulsa. And that's just an unforced error. No, oh, that's frustrating. You're, you're sitting there, and he's running with the ball, and he feels like he's in good shape with it. And your hands are sweaty, and it's late in the game, but you've got to tuck the ball away, even if you can't get the first down or get out of bounds. Yeah, that was not good. I mean, he forced his own fumble. And Christian Johnson really hustled at 255 to get out there and fall on the, on the fumble. That's why you chase the ball. Paxton Lynch, handoff. Memphis, you figure now, will be happy to keep the ball mostly on the ground. But Jamarius Henderson got another carry there. He's up over 80 yards. Dorsey is with 127 yards rushing. Another fantastic block by Allen Cross, but he got dinged up a little bit, and he's going to the sideline. He gets dinged up a lot. He's a tough dude. <laughs> it, uh, he runs into a lot of people in three and a half hours. Short gain on second down. Sudden change once again. You fumble the ball on your offense. Your defense just came off the field. Get back out there and make a stop. It's a good challenge for the Tulsa defense. Yeah, not easy to do. You'll see Memphis slow down now, 10.44. They're not in any hurry. They don't want to stop their momentum, but they don't want to rush things. Control tempo offense. Lynch with another pump fake. Rolling to buy time and finds his man. Caught for a first down. What a patient play by the Memphis offense. Daniel Hurd with his first catch of the game for 16 yards. Once again, he steps out of the pocket. He has a pump fake. He sees the whole field. He comes back out to the right and throws a dart between two really good defenders for the first down. And you can see Memphis is happy to let the clock wind. 34 first downs for Memphis in this game. With 10 minutes to go. That one's going backwards. A good play by the defense. Derek Alexander's a good football player. He's got a career of 109 tackles. This is his 45th start. And he's tough and smart. He plays with good leverage, gets upfield, tackle for a loss. Yeah, he beat the guy who might be the most talented offensive lineman, Taylor Fallon, the left tackle. Good to see that senior in a new system playing hard till the end. Pitch play. And another tackle for no gain, or maybe yeah, he got a couple of yards on that one. Yeah, Jeremy Brady comes up from his safety position and makes a really good tackle in space. Third and 11 for Memphis. Be smart. No turnovers. You got one of the best kickers in the country. You don't have to make the first down. Just play smart here. 
So they'll hand the ball off, and Tulsa saw that one coming. Another loss on the play of a yard for Dorseus. Another good tackle for loss by Jeremy Smith. Very impressed with him. 6'5", 248 pounds, sophomore. Local guy. It's going to be a really good player for Tulsa. That's a good stop. Sudden change, fumble the ball. Guys are penetrating. They're playing hard. you got to feel good if you're Philip Montgomery about the way your defense continues to fight. Well, it hasn't exactly been easy for Tulsa. They have had a hard schedule. Played Oklahoma on the road against a good East Carolina team. Playing Houston, who's a real good team, and now Memphis. Well, those are losses. Those aren't bad losses. Fair catch signal. Tulsa gets the ball back, and we'll be back after this 59-35 Memphis. Yeah, it's a Friday night. I'm a college student. My team's down big. I could still have some fun. 59-35 Memphis, part of this American Conference, which has really had a great year, Mac. The win over Ole Miss, maybe the best win by any American team. Ole Miss ranked 13th, but Houston undefeated. Tom Herman, great start to his head coaching career. How about Temple with the comeback win to set up their huge game against Notre Dame next Saturday? Yeah, this is a special league. Tom Herman worked for us as a graduate assistant. I, I would tell him at 6-0, and oh, quit. You'd be the only coach never to have a loss. <laughs> but he's doing a great job at Houston. So I don't think he'll listen. No. There's Kiaris Garrett out into the open field for Tulsa. Garrett's had a monster game. And we can't say Tulsa should go one-minute offense because they're one-minute offense the entire game. That's their regular offense. So they're never too far behind to have a chance to catch up. And this is who they are. Wide splits. Garrett's over 200 yards receiving now with three touchdowns. There's a throw out of bounds. Caught, but out of bounds. Let's check in on the sideline with Allison Williams. Yeah, options getting thin at running back for Tulsa. Zach Langer has not been able to play this game with a hamstring injury. D'Angelo Brewer was not able to play, and now Ramadi Warren on the sideline. Pretty hobble does not look like he'll be back in. So now they are down to Rowdy Simon in that running back, guys. He was nowhere to be found on the depth chart. Thank you, Allison. So, yeah, they are really thin. Good news is they got to pass the ball from here on out, so they may not be handle the ball off too much but going forward that would be a problem Evans down the right sideline incomplete with a flag thrown that'll be against Dontrell Nelson of Memphis a lot of penalties and a lot of big yardage penalties in this game pass interference defense number 10 15 yard penalty automatic first down it's over a hundred penalty yards against Memphis in this one both teams are playing very aggressive man coverage they're putting their hands on the receivers and sometimes you're there and you're ready to make the play but you just get a little too much grab a jersey push a little bit and that's what happened to Dontrell Nelson on that play that gives Tulsa a first down 737 to go and they do have the ball off Rowdy Simon making the most of his opportunity he gets 10 yards that's a first down and you can see the you can see the respect. Another shot down the field. It is caught. Wow, has Kiaris Garrett had a night or what? And you can see the respect from Justin Fuentes leaving his first team defense out there. Fake, really good protection up front. The ball's thrown perfectly over the outside shoulder. And Kiarius Garrett just continues to show up. Ball caught again over Arthur Millett. Right, look at the numbers. 12 catches, 252 yards, and three touchdowns. Impressive night. Hand off, and Rowdy Simon Allison just talked about him. Nowhere to be found on the depth chart, and he gets a touchdown. So how about that? That's a cool moment for him. Coaches always say it's the next man up. That's what you do. Or the next man, or the next man, or, or the, the next, next man, man after that. But it really doesn't matter. You've got players, so it's somebody's turn to step up. And you can see how happy those players are for that young guy. Yeah, two good runs on that drive and punched it in. Four plays, 81 yards. The penalty helped. Extra point is good. 
Well, we were literally just talking about how banged up they were at running back. And number 21 had to come in the game, Roddy Simon, and here's what he did. Touchdown, Tulsa. Maybe, maybe not over yet. ESPN College Football is presented by Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Sandwiches and in part by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. Hey, look inside the Petroleum Engineering Lab here on the campus of Tulsa University. Biggest major at Tulsa Petroleum Engineering. No shock in this part of the world. Inside the drill at the simulator on campus. Yeah, those are your future petroleum engineers of America, right there. Makes you feel great moving forward. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they are having fun. Life's about having fun, and they're bright kids. Good for them. Sleep well tonight, everybody. <laughs> Here's a kickoff deep and a touchback. 59-42, Memphis gets the ball back in what has been a wild game, high-scoring game. Not quite yet the highest scoring game in college football this year, but we're getting there. That memorable TCU at Texas Tech game, Rutgers at Indiana. One more touchdown, and this becomes the highest scoring game of the season. And we got 7.06 to go. I, I, if we don't get another touchdown before this one is over, I'll be shocked. I think we're going to get more than one the way these two teams score. I'm with you. 628 total yards for Memphis. Paxton Lynch responsible for a lot of those. A few more games like this, and he is right in that Heisman conversation. And part of that depends on Memphis's ability to keep winning, which is not going to be easy. Hand off. And a nice tough run, not for big yards, but Dorlan Dorsey is with the effort to get something positive for Memphis. Very impressive night for that young man. And people are, who are wondering why Justin Fiente would keep Paxton Lynch in the ball game. He's seen too many TCU Baylor games. Really, it's, it's not over till it's over. So he's gonna let that clock run some. And he's seen even Tulsa score too quickly tonight to feel comfortable about this. He's letting that clock run. Well, they've had those four quick strike scoring drives in this game, Tulsa has. But you're right, he wants that play clock to wind down on every snap, second and seven. They'll throw the short completion right side. Most Frazier gets knocked out of bounds. Here comes a flag. I think that one's going. If it's a holding call, I think it's against Memphis trying to block downfield. But we'll find out officially what the call is. At some point, we will find out. Most Frazier. Hold it. Offense, number three. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Holding Miller, but most Frazier's had a very impressive night tonight. The seniors are the guys, graduates, that have to step up on the road after the emotion spent in an Ole Miss game to make it work like it has for Memphis. You know, one thing, I'm surprised they accepted the penalty. Uh, the clock is your enemy. Now it's second down. That gives more time off the clock. It was not a first down completion. Might not matter at all, but still surprised. Dorsey is with the carry close, but still short by a couple of yards. But that's another 40 seconds now as the play clock starts to wind. Uh, they're not going to snap this ball till we're close to five minutes to go. Now we're in the four minute offense now, so you'll see Memphis use that shot clock. They're going to take it down to three seconds. They're going to try to keep making first downs. If you're the coaching staff at Memphis, you're saying, guys, we do not want to give the ball back to Tulsa. Let's finish this game on offense. Very deliberate, very physical, but let's finish the game on offense. couple more first downs and they may well be able to do that they're gonna throw it it is complete but stopped short short by a good yard even with the extra effort by Frazier so that's gonna be punt time for Memphis and again they're gonna let the clock wind down but it's fourth down what a play by Jordan Mitchell he's got Anthony Miller right there to block him he knocks Anthony back and tackles one of the best players on the Memphis team 
most Frazier for no gain. That was that was a good play. Now the clock has stopped a timeout. Who called that timeout? I mean Tulsa called it. They let 20 seconds burn off the clock before they called the timeout. But they are going to reset some of that on the game clock. So even with the punt coming up here, Paxton Lynch, he's been the story tonight. We talked about him coming in. What a week he had. What a season he is having it tonight has been awesome. He sees the field so well. He's got the double pump. He's got the strong arm. He's so accurate with what he does. He doesn't worry about protection breaking down. He hits the back. And then to beat it all, to put it right in your face, he can run. So he can do everything. Finds the open receiver, very accurate, and can beat you with his arm or his feet. Uh, this young man keeps playing like he is. He will be in New York. And Memphis is going to be tough to beat despite their tough schedule coming up. They've still got Navy. They've still got Houston on the road. They've still got Temple on the road. And then if they get through that, they All would starts. have a conference Offense, championship game. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. That's a penalty against Memphis. To move them five yards backwards. Keep your focus. Finish strong. Don't get sloppy here with 4.45 left in the game. 17-point lead. A line drive punt. It's going to hit out of bounds, and Tulsa will have pretty good field position when we come back. 4.39 to go. Golden Hurricane trying to make it a ball game down 17. Memphis, the 18th ranked team of the country, on their way to 7-0. Still 439 to go, up 59-42 on the road at Tulsa. One of those group of five teams in the top 25 in the AP poll. Memphis, the highest ranked of those teams. Toledo right behind, undefeated 19th ranked team of the country. Houston 21st, Temple 22nd, and then lurking outside, Western Kentucky, Boise State, Utah State, who kicks off very shortly at San Diego State. A throw again to nobody and I think again this time he was out of the tackle box so no intentional grounding they'll talk about it when we talk about group of five I do think it's important those group of five conferences the American intentional grounding they offense called number nine intentional grounding by Spot the way foul. Lost him down. Second down. So he had to get outside the tackle box. He did not. Mountain West, Mac, Sun Belt, Conference USA. One spot in those New Year's Day bowl games, the New Year's Six, they call them, goes to a group of five champion. So the committee's highest ranked team among the champions from those five conferences is guaranteed. Now, you could get more in theory, but at least one spot goes to that team. And Memphis right now is very well positioned. Well, and Boise was the champion last year that actually beat Arizona in the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah, great game. Under pressure, throw on the move, a completion, adding to the totals for Garrett. To set up third down and about nine coming up for Tulsa. Now Memphis's schedule is a gauntlet for me. I mean, they've already beaten Ole Miss, so they've they've passed some tests. They've played good opponents and they've won those games, but it will not be easy for the Tigers. This one is caught again, short on the tackle with the ball coming out. It is recovered in bounds in Memphis along the sideline, out of bounds. But a fumble recovery by Regis Ball may well put this game away. He figured it was mostly over, but a last gasp for Tulsa. The turnover should seal it. Regis Ball, the impact player for Memphis tonight for us. Memphis. Ruling on the, the field is an interception by Memphis. Previous play is under further review. Well, we know it's not an interception. I, he meant to say a fumble Extra recovery. fumble recovery by Memphis. Okay, good job, Adam, to correct yourself. Really good job by Regis staying in bounds, keeping his balance. You've always got to hustle for you young guys out there. Even if you may not make the play, you can see a ball pop out, and you see what Regis Ball did. Uh, Regis uh, Ball did. He picked up the ball, stayed in bounds, and if he's loafing or thinks the play's over and doesn't hustle to get there, that ball's out of bounds. Well, it was definitely a fumble. Noah Robinson knocked it out, and that, to me, looks definitely like a recovery inbounds by Ball. So they'll also double-check to make sure they got the spot right where he went out of bounds, and it was right there. 
So at that yard line, that's where he went out of bounds. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Memphis ball, first down. Yeah. Well, that was a pretty easy one. Nice play by the Memphis defense. They haven't had a ton of them tonight. They played so much better, I think, than anybody expected last week against Ole Miss. There were a lot of people who thought, well, Memphis will score, but they're going to give up 60 to Ole Miss, and they did not. But we've got to give a lot of credit to the Art Browse offense. What they're doing at Bowling Green, what they're doing here, it's not just at Baylor anymore. Yeah. These guys are disciples of Art. And they're taking that offense on the road, and it's working. Well, that's it. You, you say, okay, they've given up 42 points. They haven't played a real good game. But when you play an Art Briles-style offensive team, you, it's almost impossible to not give up a bunch of yards and usually a bunch of points, too. Yeah. Those two are on the same page tonight. Head coach and quarterback, head coach, play caller, and quarterback. So this will really help them moving forward. I mean, Memphis has five sacks. They forced seven punts. They've come up with a couple turnovers. In fact, three of them. So, now Memphis will be disappointed in giving up the big plays. Yeah, that, that's what they'll focus on next week. Lynch handoff. And a good tough run. Close to the first down for Henderson. So we're talking about Memphis and what they have still in store. You figure against an undermanned Tulane team at home, Memphis won't have too many problems with that. But then they get a tough Navy team on the road at Houston, on the road at Temple, finish with SMU. SMU can put points on the board. Yeah, and that's three really tough football games there in the middle. Navy is a team you don't want to play during the middle of the season, especially with injuries on defense because they can dominate with the wishbone offense and slow the game down and cut your defensive lineman and, and stay on the field. And then Houston's playing lights out, and so is Temple. Really good football ahead. And off. Stopped, I think, just short of a first down. How about when Greg Ward, Jr., the quarterback at Houston, who's having a great year for the undefeated Cougars. He's 5'11". So you get that matchup where two great quarterbacks, two great offenses. Paxton Lynch, it'll be a big brother, little brother situation. That'll be a fun game. Yeah, Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator that played for us and worked for us at Texas, yep. is the offensive coordinator at uh, at Houston, and he and Tom Herman have a really good offense going. So it's fourth and one for the Tigers. Memphis is going to get to the line of scrimmage. They're not going to call a timeout. They will run a play here. Straight handoff, first down. And no! Touchdown, Jamarius Henderson. Well, we got the highest scoring game in college football this year. That was the capper, his second touchdown, 65-42, with one more to come, you figure. And that's not Memphis running up the score. They ran the power play, which they've run all night on short yardage and goal line. They tried to get up the jump off sides. It's the exact same power play. It's just really good running by the Memphis offense. And those guys have been powerful at breaking tackles all night. Extra point up and good. Wow. 66-42 the score for Memphis with a minute 39 still to go. Tomorrow on ABC College Football presented by Kay Jewelers. And that's a good game, Clemson. Against Miami, Miami has shown some signs. Clemson, number six of the country, undefeated. So that's at noon Eastern. Then fast forward on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern. You get number one Ohio State on the road against Rutgers. The Buckeyes, they haven't been blowing people out, that's for sure. No, but I do think we hold them to a different standard. Yep. They're, they're last year's Florida State. Even Alabama we hold to a different standard. And, and everybody... Uh, that is critical of Al Golden. Nobody wants to play him. I can promise you that. So when Miami's coming to town, they get everybody's attention, and that'll be a really good game with Clemson and Miami tomorrow night. So 66 to 42 here, Memphis with that lead, putting the game away. And I am impressed. This was a dangerous game against a good offensive team where they've been flat. This could have been a, a big upset loss. Instead, they just keep rolling. How it can't have been there can't have been many games in the history of college football we've already talked about how it's the most combined points in a game 108 tonight of any game this season 
how many games in history have had a quarterback throw for over 400 yards and two different running backs run for 100 yards or more? I would guess that list is pretty short. Neither running back were starters either last week against Ole Miss. So Justin has to feel good about this. Tulsa scored 38 points against an Oklahoma defense. So to give up 42 tonight with a minute 39 left, he'll, he'll be disappointed in some things. But what you want to do right now as an undefeated Memphis team is you want to win and advance. That's the only thing that matters. You can fix all the areas that you need to fix after a win. Well, Simon, the walk-on, who had a touchdown run earlier in this fourth quarter with the carry. Well, Tulsa's going to have to regroup, but Justin Fuente powering on, 18th-ranked team of the country, and you figure a chance with this performance, and who knows what will happen tomorrow, to move up. And they have a winning streak of 14 straight wins, 14. and this is the eighth straight win on the road. Both of those are really difficult to do. That's third best right now in the FBS. Yeah, Ohio State, TCU have longer winning streaks. That's it. That's pretty good company. Another carry for Simon. Just Philip playing Montgomery. out the final minute yes. of this game. Philip Montgomery's doing the same thing. He knew that Justin tried to line up and run the ball on fourth and one. He's doing the same. Run the ball to get the game over. The final 40 seconds of this one. And Dave, what a credit to Gary Patterson. Yep. Justin Fuente took a lot of the things that he learned from Gary Patterson, and he took them to Memphis. Gary Patterson has the second longest winning streak in college football. So obviously what both are doing are working. You got a TCU disciple against a Baylor disciple. Those two teams seem headed for a collision at the end of the Big 12 season. Texas Big 12 football ties there everywhere around the country these days including in Memphis which has become one of the centers of the college football world the 18th ranked team of the country with another win 66 to 42 we're going to come back in a moment with Memphis coach Justin Fuente but first we'll send you Jay Harris Kevin Connors in studio it's Sports Center.